Can we please welcome the student panel? Our MC first, our MC. Please welcome our MC for the day. The student panel.
Malueni. Hi, Bo. Hi, Bo. Hi, Bo. I'm not Nazi Bele, ne? Siamaz Nazi Bele, right? So I'm not her, as you all can see, but Zagalala approach yag, ne? So I'm going to greet you in a certain way. And with the same liveness, with the same liveness, and Zanboli Sangayo, I want you guys to bring it back to me, ne? Malueni! Because Benji Natadingo knows. Good turning over. Hi, guys. Moloeni. Um, I am a little And I am going to be your MC for the day. Um, I'm trying to check the mood of the crowd. And it's not giving. Are we tired? Are we hungry? Yeah, of course we are. <laughs> I saw that one coming. Uh, I saw that one coming. Okay, all right. Um, uh, I want to welcome everyone, with Nana, um, to this prestigious event um, that aims at curbing one of the most social ills, Esipila um, Nazo, in our communities, in our societies, in our villages, in our homes, is going everywhere. Um, I want to welcome our stakeholders. I would like to welcome our students. I would like to welcome our organizers um, and pretty much everyone who has availed themselves to be here. Um, thanking you very much that you are here in the hope that everything is going to create um, a new thing in our society. Sisem um, Vagakulu. So we'll go straight into our program. But before that, Sizobiza E University of Forte Choir. Econ amongst us? Is it ready? Oh, awesome. Lovely. Are you guys gonna come down? No. Okay. is unseen. A man is abused by a woman. A woman abused by a man. Their stories are untold. Their sorrow is unspoken. Their scars and wounds lie beyond our eyes. We live in a world that sees only violence from men and innocence from women. But the truth is not black and white. Women too can wield weapons, both material and verbal, that tear a man to pieces, for violence and abuse have no gender. We live in a world where men who carry titles of doctors, professors, pastors, and presidents are often found not guilty of abuse, while men on the streets are easily labeled as rapists. But abuse can happen from anyone and from anywhere, no matter their positions and power. 
It can happen to anyone. It can happen anywhere. It is not just strangers we fear, but people we hold dear. On gatherings like this, we remember the names of those we have lost. Yonela Boli and other victims who choose to lean on silence. Their lives were taken too soon. Their stories should not be forgotten. We will not let their names be erased. We will keep them alive in our memory. We stand together in their honor, fighting for a world free from violence. As this world is marked by gender-based violence, we must speak out. We must stand up. We must take action. For too long we have been silent, but no more. We will use our words. We will use our voices. We will not be silenced. We, for the lives taken, for the lives still suffering, we will fight for change. We will fight for justice. We will fight for healing. We will fight for a free and a better world. Violence has no gender. See Vila now. Violence has no gender. So this obviously means that in our day and age, violence is done both by men and women, isn't it? All right. Um, before we move into our next item, um, could Ulinda, the violinist, please come forward? Before we have her. Um, Maybe something I failed to mention. Uh, I am a change activist. Ne? I am a community development practitioner. And there's a certain way in which we do things. Le activism. Right. Um, I am well aware that this is a very prestigious event. And it has a lot of dignitaries, which I do recognize. Um, however, there's something I just want to do to make us all feel welcome. I, I can't sing to save my own life, so we're gonna have to work hand in hand, ne? Choir, help us, please. please. There we go. Come on, guys. And Neva, and Neva, do sing it with passion. Sing it with passion.
Thank you. Thank you, Linda, for that. Um, are we still okay? Are we still happy? Awesome. Um, si Zotela u Miss N S Moyo Ozo Nigai welcoming of the day. Uh, DJ Stella Upakami so Miss Moyo. She seems to be already on her feet. Can you please welcome her to the stage? And if she could just dance. If she could just dance. Thank you, uh, Program Director. Amanda! 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 Pansing a GPV Pansy! Pansing a GPV Pansy! The day we have been waiting for has finally arrived. And I want to greet you, Sani Bonani, Molweni, Huemor. Good morning and greetings to you. But before I start, I'm going to ask you to please do something for me. I want you to nudge the person that's sitting next to you and say to them, using in your own local language, Say to them, welcome to the University of Fort Hare. <laughs> so, in my language, I would say, Sia Gwa Mugela Gwa No College. Welcome to the University of Fort Hare. And I would like to start by acknowledging the principal and the vice chancellor of the university, the university leadership at large, members of the MSC, EMT, who are here with us today. Thank you for being here. We will not be able to do this important work without your continued support and your demonstrated commitment to a safer university environment. Secondly, I do recognize some of our partners and stakeholders from government, from civil society organizations and the private sector. Specifically, I note the presence of the Raymond Mlaba municipality and specifically our ward councillor, Mr. Lux. I also note members of the South African Police Service from our local police station. We welcome you. I also note the presence of representatives from the Victoria Hospital. We welcome you to Fort Hare. I also note that we do have representatives from the Raymond Mklaba Rapid Response Team, the Eastern Cape Liquor Board. We also have NGOs, Masimanyani, Bumbingomso, Sia Namugela. We welcome you to Fort Ham. And thirdly, and most importantly, I want to recognize you, our VVVVVVIPs of this of this event. I want to welcome and recognize the students and staff members of the University of Fort Hay. All the work that we do, all this work that we do will be mean, would be meaningless without you who are the users and the experiencers and the people who experience the work that you do. And I really want to thank you for coming to this event. It is not a mistake that you are here today. You made the right decision, and we are very grateful to have you here. 
as I welcome you and share the purpose of this event, I want to remind us how through the guidance and leadership of our Vice Chancellor, Professor Sakela Butlungu, the university developed and came up with a 2022 to 2026 strategic plan towards a decade of renewal. And who would have thought that today, the 26th of March, 2024, we would be gathered here this very day and we would be launching our very first GPV prevention unit offices. We would have thought that we would be here putting those, the words into action and truly making significant strides towards making and renewing our university into a transformative one. And indeed, many of you will attest to this, we have seen we have witnessed the vice chancellor. He has not shied away from the camera. He has not shied away from students. He has not shied away from members of staff. He has not shied away from speaking out against gender-based violence. And indeed, we have seen him many times emphasizing our zero, our stand and position and our zero tolerance approach to gender-based violence. And vice chancellor, I am very excited today to stand here, breathing life into the very aspiration, the very vision that we aspire to as a university, to renew and transform and become a safer space for our students and staff. And we are all here today to breathe life into this vision, to breathe life into this aspiration, which was signed, endorsed, and seconded by the wider university community. As a university, we want to be known as the best, as one of the best universities, not only in South Africa, but globally. We want to be a university that sets the trends, that leads the way when it comes to transformation and in developing scholarship, thought leadership, and innovative approaches and interventions to address gender-based violence in high in institutions of higher learning and in our communities. And what we are doing today is part of the road towards that. In a world and society where the levels of gender-based violence are unprecedented, a country where in just the year 2023 to 2024 alone, we had over 10,000 reported rape cases. And this is only the reported cases. What, so as a university, we want to lead the way in providing solutions to eliminating gender-based violence. We want other universities to come and ask us, how are you doing? How did you do it? How did you manage to do this? And starting from today, let them come and knock at our doors. Let them come and tap into our best practices. Let us be the ones who set the trends. And this is what today is all about. And as I stand here, as the director of the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit, I am breathing life, I am breathing oxygen into this unit. And I am clear about this one thing. I cannot do it without your support. The Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit cannot do this work alone. We need you, we need to work together to transform this historic institution into one of the best and the safest university in the world. And you know, last year when we had the queer Indaba, I stood on this very same podium and I said, we are here to learn, to unlearn, and to relearn. And today, I reiterate the very same words. The launch of the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit provides us with yet another opportunity to learn, unlearn, and to relearn. And your being here today truly shows that 
we are together in excellence, tri striving to fight against this pandemic. And we are saying gender-based violence does not belong to the University of Fort Hare. Gender-based violence does not belong to our institution. This is the very institution whose grounds have walked former presidents, daughters and sons of the soil. Talk of Dr. Phyllis Ndandala, who spoke about issues of gender-based violence and how women ought to be respected and, and, and supported in society. So I stand here standing on the shoulders of those women who walked in the corridors of this institution. Talk about Nolita Fagude. Talk about Gertrude Nlabati. Women who stood as testament to the historic power and legacy of this institution. As I conclude, our program today will start with introducing and launching our novel campaign that we are calling Reclaiming a Safer UFH, because we believe that it is possible for us to move towards, it is possible for us to become a safer institution. And you will get an opportunity to hear more about this campaign in a bit. And in the second part of the program, we will honor the memories of some of the students who we have unfortunately lost to gender-based violence over the years. And we will do so through making a brief walk uh, to one of the GBV hotspots just outside of campus, the Chume Bridge, before we finally proceed to our new GBV prevention unit offices that are located just outside the main gate. And with those few words, Dear staff, dear students and staff and partners, Zawa No College, I want to once again welcome you and to remind you that gender-based gender -based violence prevention is indeed your business. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
sithembeni na madoda ngoba nina nizinzika sithembeni na madoda ngoba nina nizinzika so many homes have fallen ngoba akho madoda so many people have lost their lives because we have normalized izinto that have got no place in our homes and in our society but today we are here to say gender based violence prevention is your business if there's one thing that you should you should actually give something about it is gender based violence we have become a society that wants to mind everything I can't say anything to the police and genda okelakai. It's none of my business. But it is your business when someone loses their life ube uyazwe nalonto. Gender based violence is your business. And I want to charge these students as a forte to create within themselves a chain of both sisterhood and brotherhood to make your sister or your brother's business your business. This means that when they don't have anything to eat, you make that your business. When you hear rumors of them being in a, in a toxic and abusive relationship, you make that your business as much as we make every other thing our business. Um so as we are having this day, we also have hashtags that we are all about. Um many of us, if not all of us in the house are into social media. Um I would like us to follow what is happening on social media as far as the university's social media platform goes. So we've got a hashtag uh, #GBV prevention is your business. We have got hashtag #reclaiming a safer UFH. We have got hashtag #UFH against gender-based violence. Please feel free to write your quotes. Feel free to quote anyone's quote that you feel you resonate with, and mobilize and push the agenda that we are pushing today. Thank you so much for Sequoia for that. Uh, moving on to our next item, I am going to ask Miss Cheryl. Zondi, who is our guest speaker, to come up front. Can you please stand on our feet and clap hands as she makes her way to the stage? Please sit down. <laughs> Molueni. Molueni. Ninjani. Uh, I know we've already done a lot of singing this morning, but if you would just humor me. Uh, <laughs> Ulinda, the voc uh, violinist, was playing this song, and um, I'd just like us to sing it together in chorus. So that's Sibe Umoya Umunye. Is that okay with you guys? All right. Oh, uh... 
Thank you. Senzenina, uh, that is the question. We've been asking ourselves this question for millennia, and we find ourselves here yet again, as if all the brutal killings in this country are not enough to call us to action. My name is Cheryl Zondi. Um, I am a singer, songwriter, and not so long ago, I was a student, like many of you um, sitting here. And today I'm here in my capacity as a speaker. Um, I was asked to come here today to contextualize our lives in South Africa and the climate of gender-based violence that we're faced with. And to help with this context, I want to bring numbers into the situation so it's more practical for everyone. Um, I myself am someone who has gone through abuse, but we'll delve into that in just a bit. So to give you context, um, last time I checked, every single day in South Africa, 100 people are raped. 100 people. I know in theory that sounds like a small number, but 100 people across the country, even at this very moment as we're gathered here, at any given time, in any given place, post offices, schools, churches, and sometimes in their very own homes. A hundred people every single day are being raped. I want you guys to keep that number in your heads because it's going to be relevant to the conversation. Um, I want to talk about the impact of gender-based violence, and for this, I'm going to touch on my own story a little bit. So, most people um, may recognize me from the case that was publicized in 2018, um, when I spoke out against my rapist um, in court. That was a very publicized um, case, and that is when I took my power back as a former victim turned survivor. For those of you who don't know, um, I was sexually assaulted and raped by a pastor at a church. And for those of you who don't know the difference between sexual assault and rape, sexual assault is any sexual contact without penetration and rape involves penetration. I've learned these things from being in court. Now, when I joined this church, I was 13 years old going on 14, so I was in grade seven and soon to go to grade eight in the following year. And I'd always wanted to be a singer. It's always been my passion. And when I joined this church, I got into this environment, you know, young people who looked like me, um, who I was in close proximity to, people that I could relate to, adolescents who were going through the same things that I was going through in my life. And I felt like, you know what, this place is home. I, I think sing Figililana, where I belong now. And the cherry on top was that this church was also musical. And as a person who loved music, I felt like I'm killing two birds with one stone. I get to sing and I get to sing for God. How amazing, right? So I joined the church only to find myself being abused um, by the pastor. And... I want, to, I want to call your attention to how abuse can sometimes start before anything physical ever happens. Because this person was essentially hijacking my mind. I would have to report my movements to him and I would only do anything with his permission. Even my friends and the people I associated with, he had to approve. Now, in many ways, the hijacking of the mind was worse than the actual physical abuse um, because I was made to believe that I wanted it, like most survivors are made to believe. Um, I was made to believe that it was right and I was wrong for being against it. And this person abused his authority and his respected position in the community and the society over my own belief in my religion. And this could apply in many different scenarios as well. Maybe the rapist is your breadwinner, Ikai. Perhaps the rapist is your father, your brother, or your father's best friend. 
Maybe the school principal is the rapist and everyone believes that the principal is a good guy, right? How many of you guys have watched Gomorrah? Gomorrah, guys, Gomorrah. <laughs> How many of you guys have watched um, the new show Youngins on Showmax? Ne? Um, these are stories that happen every single day. And it talks to the fact that people can be something completely different behind closed doors. That is why the impact is so detrimental. Now, just touching back on my own journey, um, what rape does to a person, right? I remember struggling with my self-image. Um, I thought that perhaps I had dressed inappropriately for my age, and that gave the pastor the right to look at me lustfully. Um, I thought that maybe I should hide my curves. I was an adolescent going through puberty. Perhaps I should hide myself so that people don't look at me lustfully. I went into depression, so much so that when I was 18, which was 10 years ago, God, I'm old. <laughs> 10 years ago, um, I tried to commit suicide, uh, but fortunately I didn't win. And going into coming out now, ultimately about my rape, I had to suffer the consequence of now being defined by my scars, being defined by the rape. I wasn't Cheryl Zondi anymore. I was the rape survivor. I wasn't the singer anymore. I was that girl from the trial. And I think that's an important impact to note as well because we can't punish survivors by defining them, by the, the thing that broke them as soon as they discover the courage within themselves to come out. And then ultimately, after coming out, I had all these expectations put on me, um, and I started abusing substances. I think for two years, I was hooked on drugs. Uh, it became a daily thing because I just didn't have the time to deal with the demons that were bothering me inside. I didn't have time for pain because the thing about life is that it moves on whether you're in pain or not. You have things to do, people to see, and sometimes pain can be an inconvenience. But that's the cross that people like myself who've survived this kind of abuse have to bear. I just want to check if you guys are still with me. You remember how many people get raped every day? How many? Sorry? All right. Now, I want you guys to look at me, for example. I want you guys to multiply me by 100. I don't care if in your mind you're thinking of a girl or women like me or boys and men. Just look at me and think of me times 100. Think about all the healing that someone like me has to do. I think it's safe to say that's enough healing to last two lifetimes, and there's not, enough, there's not enough time to do that. So many issues to work through, and so much baggage to carry. And on top of that, you still need to be a functional human being. You need to get the degree, which is the reason why most of you are here, right? Right? <laughs> so you need to get the degree, Get the job, the wife, the husband, build the family, buy the house, the cars, make the kids, make the friends, and still manage to squeeze in some happiness into the equation. So much healing needed, and yet the breaking is still happening. A hundred people every single day. Now, I've heard many excuses over the years for rape. Maybe she was drunk. Maybe her outfit was just so inviting. Maybe she was mature for her age. Or maybe because he's a boy, men want it anyway, so men can't be raped, right? I've also heard equally excuses for not speaking out. And this goes for those of us who have been affected and those who are complacent because they know someone a victim or a predator, and they choose to keep silent and look the other way instead of saying something. The cycle of abuse is so vicious that we tend to look at ourselves as individuals and think, 
GBV is just too big a monster for me to do anything about it. And that type of thinking is exactly where the danger is. Because I'm here to tell you, you absolutely can do anything about it. Look at your neighbor and tell them you can do something about it. Okay, let me help you. Look to your left and tell them you can do something about it. Look to your right and say, you can do something about it. Okay, one more time. Now mean it. Say it like you mean it. Left, you can do something about it. Right, you can do something about it. Gender-based violence is your business. Gender-based violence is your business whether it's happened to you or not. It is your business whether your sister, your mother, or your girlfriend has gone through it or not. It is your business whether or not your son is such a good boy who would never do such a thing. Hi, hi. Demazu si pochomi. Saze. Saze. Out a grand. Behind closed doors. When it comes to gender-based violence, you know no one. Because the same person that you see in the streets is not the same person you think you know behind closed doors. Abusers know exactly what they're doing. A lecturer can abuse his students and go home and be the loving husband to his wife loving father to his children. A woman you entrust your children with when you go to work can be the greatest thing that's happened to you, alleviating you of stress. Gender-based violence is your business. Now, I just want to move on. I think the most, one of the most unsettling and equally flattering things that have been said to me since I've come out about my abuse is how remarkable I am. Oh, Cheryl, you're so brave. Cheryl, you're so strong. Cheryl, you're so unbreakable. Guys, Nemaz or Superman? Nemaz? Do you guys know Superman? Oh, Superman, we are flyer. He can take this building and carry it with his bare hands, laser vision. That is unbreakable. And unbreakable is not human. It's like trying to aspire to perfection. It's unattainable. So, it doesn't exist in real life. And I think calling people unbreakable superhumans removes you from accountability. You make these mere mortals so remarkable so that you don't have to be. Right? Yeah, I'll leave it to Abba Cheryl. We'll leave it to Abba Winnie Mandela. Because I could never imagine. Who's to say that you could never? Because all it takes is opening your mouth and saying something. Unfortunately, we can't afford to let ourselves off the hook that easily and say we'll leave it to Osban Ban who are so brave and unbreakable and so strong. If you know that your neighbor is abusing his family, how can you know someone is being abused and choose to not say anything about it? If you know in your social circles that your homeboy likes harassing girls on campus, say something about it. If you pick up red flags and conversation with your friends and family and even your colleagues when they're talking about the opposite sex, even if it's none of your business, make it your business because it is. Uzfag, shikri, pagati. Because that is the ill of gender-based violence. It is so deeply rooted in our society that we think it's normal. We've heard the stories. Abu Karabo Mukwena, Nostelu, who was a student right here at Fort Hay. Is it normal to you to find someone's body pieces in a suitcase on the side of the road in living daylight? Is it normal? Guys, is it normal? It isn't. 
And you think such a shocking thing, such a brutal way to end a life would call people to action, but people constantly need reminding. Why is it that we focus on gender-based violence during the 16 days of activism? Does gender-based violence only happen for 16 days a year? Does it? Why is it that we come back to the social ills that affect women on Women's Month only? Does that only happen in Women's Month? Why are we gathering and reminding ourselves how awful gender-based violence is? Does it only happen, does it only affect people when we're gathering at events like this? Does it? No? Guys, Nisa Vugile. I'm just a girl, but the only difference is that I decided to say something. And now I can proudly say that the man who raped me will never ever rape anyone ever again. Now, I know it's cute to stand here and speak about it, but I want to let you know it isn't easy. Speaking out isn't easy in any capacity, whether you're the one who's affected um, or someone who's witnessing someone else being abused, it isn't easy. But I think now you guys have organizations such as the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit here at Fort Hare that gives students a soft landing. I really wish that I had something like this in my days as a university student, because it's nice to know that you can run away from your abuser and have a safe place to go to, even in the middle of the night. And can we just clap hands for them, because that's, that's a milestone. <laughs> now, I want to let you know that it will never be the convenient time It'll never be the convenient situation. You'll never have the perfect time to speak out about gender-based violence, whether you're affected about it or not, because it is an uncomfortable conversation to have. Our job is to make this discomfort so common that everyone is talking about it, that no one else needs reminding whether they're directly affected by it or not. So, that we can potentially save 100 people every single day. Now, I don't want to do the math, but if you multiply 100 by 365, I think that's a lot of lives. You know, a lot of us will be more functioning, better functioning parents when we grow up. We won't have so much, we won't be spending so much time healing from trauma, we can actually live life and be happy. And I want you to know that making a difference when it comes to gender-based violence is maybe something that we probably won't reap the benefits in our generation, but the future generations will thank us for it. In terms of senza i shade, that will never ever sit in, and it's fine because pe previous generations have paid the price for us as well, so it's our turn now. Segunjal. And, yeah. Ningzwil? Ningzwile? All right, turn to your neighbor and tell them gender-based violence is your business. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Um, just as a side note, we understand the sensitivity of the program and we understand that some of us may be triggered. Yes. Yes, triggered. Yes. Um, so we understand that this is a very sensitive um, program and some of us may be triggered. Um, could our reflector jacketed individuals lift up their hands, please? Amanda Bangumi, reflector jacket. Yes. In the event that you feel like you need psychosocial support, kindly go to Bakwana Napape Zulu, Bakwana Napayana. Kindly go to one of them and then they will redirect you. Thank you so much. Um, just a few pointers. 
Cheryl mentioned something relatively important in her speech. One of the things she said is, it's not your fault. Um, I know of a lady who was raped at some point by her friend's, her husband's friend. And throughout the entire ordeal, all he was saying while he was on top of her was, it's your fault. Why would you wear isn't resin? It's your fault. You want it. Tell me you want it. Can you see how, can you see how sick the society is? And, and one thing about abusers is that they will... She also mentioned the fact that abusers know what they are doing. Abusers know how to walk into a room and navigate it and pull out a child that they know will walk out of them quietly and not say a word. They have mastered the art of manipulation. Now, if there's one thing we are going to do or we ought to do in order to change the narrative, it is to make it a point that survivors know that it wasn't their fault. Even if she was wearing a two centimeter but revealing skirt. She was not asking for it. Consent is still a thing. The second thing she mentioned was, we cannot punish survivors by the very same thing that broke them. And that is what we do as a society. That is what we do when we are sitting in our cliques there and we've got nothing better to do. Instead of having constructive relations, all we want to do is to bash um, rape survivors or abusers. And, and we make it seem as though they deserved it. And I'm so happy that we have got mature in age individuals in the room because you find that there's there's some things that are going to be said by our parents. But but she was not asking for it though. It is not her fault. So if we are also going to change the narrative, if we are going to make this unit, what it is supposed to be, what we utter with our words is going to be different. And the last thing she said is, every abuser, like I said, is somebody's lover. Every abuser is somebody's dad. Every abuser is somebody's husband. Every abuser is somebody's BFF. Every abuser is somebody's driver. Everybody's abuser, well, every abuser is somebody, somebody, right? So if we're now going to people in that, no, but I can't speak out. Buzz out in it. Imagine if Cheryl had that mentality. Oh my goodness, he is a pastor. How dare I do that? But didn't he know that he was a pastor when he was raping me? Did it wasn't wasn't he supposed to think of himself and his family and what his children are going to eat in the event that in Dimbambi's hand he goes to jail? We need to stop being rape apologists. We need to stop being gaslighters of notes. We need to stop being or rather perpetuating narcissistic behaviors. Because when, when we, we, we make these kind of utterances, we are literally saying, you know what, it's fine. Keep at it, do what you are doing, it's okay. But if you know a survivor, wherever you are, if they do not have the stamina to speak out, the least you can do is to be there for them in their journey of healing and recovery. Um, I feel like we are tired, are we tired? Are we tired? We are not. Okay. It's ironic because the four tendias and Amaguijo and having fire in them. I, I don't know. Okay. Okay. All right. Before we call on to a drama society, is the drama society ready? Is our drama society ready? In Gala City. Ye fortele na ye fortele. Abaya ziyo, abasange ba, yoni fotele na. Ewe abaya ziyo, abasange, kala swaka mien, abasange ba, ibona. Yona abasange ba, ibona. Kali students, this is a panga pamil. Abasange ba, ibona. Yona basange baibona kala sphaka ben hi fotelena Kali students, pakam. Abazange, bye, bo. Nizaw, pakam, ageta. 
Yoni fotele na i fotele abayazio abazange yoni fotele and the and the ones that are, are young at heart could they can stand up please yo na bazange ay bazange bye bona yo na bazange bye bona ay bazange bye bona haba sange bye bona e ifotele na ifotele abayas yo abayas e ifotele na ifotele abayas yo haba sange bye bona haba sange bye bona Haba sange bai bon Haba sange bai bon Masamba masamba pokoban pokoban Eh aba basio aba sange yo ni fotele na Yo na basio aba sange ay aba sange bai bon Okay, um, they are not ready as of yet. Uh, all right, I'll ask Ms. Cheryl to come back up again um, for our conversation. Let's talk GBV conversation that she's going to lead. I am a song in I am a song in I am a song Lambo que 
Yes, 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 bro. Uh, this thing of TBV has increased a lot here in campus. Yes. This matter should be discussed in the next meeting that we, we will be having. Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. Mm. Uh, um, next time, next time. Okay, we, we will talk next time, Prof. Thank you. Kim Domazan. Oh, speaking it shall right. The pelosos top up of hands. We are bona when us turn or some missing wing. We are yas must band yak tanda. And in the tanda, there are many things in Zapno Gwenzela zone. As in Jang and Tony. Safunukusako Peri, see, the only man is now was the tear. I pray. And you should know, but I lend your band, the band in the better man. I don't know what beside you, like a catazze, a can be betty. Your son, and a natural misam, the egulus by the cellar, because the anti church. Oh, as he turned in as which I'm some bit about Funuk Bonu Pumele. Ne. You know what? Guess what? <laughs> what? Yeah, kumbula la weaving sixteen inch, the best tetang I. Open a tongue at twenty. Maso sends twenty four. Because comes as a tank. Yeah, 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 for Caesar. Must be the Stibane late man. Couldn't we call this up in seven? Okay, okay. Bye bye. Ah, so you believe that I can look on the bala? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Tradition, you okay? Kula tomalala ndanamza ukwenze la yonke into papa. Hukubunga nditi katata njenge. Kamo skamari kamfali ako leo kakazali kame unga itivu. Lao nga maziwe lecha menti ya mikazuli skatula sam ika ingeleli saizanjo kulona wam umzimba. Ongubani na onoti epa lile iskaka mfolo sekeka kukabuyele le sanini. O eti le lecha menti ya mibindi enzi stule la sayo. Sizle ndo. Aywi hambili nti miyamu ei kanga te itwangu zele ishwa izele nka oko keni nga kwa zunuli la nbangali la ngafa nbanga ponga nga pa kufagali. In any abuse of power, wine power ya yowa kiti nda nkelela. Amande nti sakalo nti chiso alikubungele lizo ngom lilo kazi. Amande okupati lizo nge stima nge stoze la bapaka misa nga umi pingo ngom kileko. Banjili leli shwe ninga nuki ba pateli zikali ba chekolo nukuti sama sikuwe lizwe kwenye ngayo buyilo amaki kwa kiko zetu ingi vyeku zetu limba cha yangu pansi tiba cheche de watengo lo me shukuma pina gena ndo sangeni de kuhusi sabi kumwa kwenye nyama slambi le umsebenzwa bo ibi kukuse la ba fundi se kutoa bo na ba shakula se ba chako kwa zimbe uba zichala yo kakuje soka la pina. Kuba inyembe zedu selezi kukubula zenziwe ista ilo soku nukubezwa. So mbao, la mchanda zo utibona izo la kowe ta uka uva kusini na. Ngenene. Enene ni ngeneze lio shalis tenile. Nge ngama ngo ni ngaze ilo benditi kukupakutumi ilo kukakeka nazo kutelenga. Kani spata ngobu ngayele nisi ngangategi so wenga ngati na mja kakwa. Sia kungongoza kwa ipinyangu ya ufulu wange nyama yeko ngapanjo kweso nye liso. Si aku kita kau apa mak kau balana kau ngau mak kau macam tu lungan kau kisah pikir le kau ngan gas kau seni sesama iskai makul kui tes ni kau kau ngau mak kau ngau bani lusi anggur fuka bubung ngai le kau selim visi suano zpata manja ahi bandu aku itu asal indo apa ten la manja ngau inu kau tu akan apa ten gendo beko nendem beko ni ngau wanja jatikis. Yo ya sport mania. Oh, kuna zalo kutman zange 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 na chole bumin ba amla we. Hai bumfe, tu funi kalbi mnyaka mnyaka zange zange zange. Tu kutman ya amla we. 
I just see him down. Um, yes, my own Africa before it has been three years. Lumdan Yandan Zelayong in the pro, Yan Chamber in Basha, Yan Pegela, Yan Pech and Pech and Fit. You are going on Bangu Wemos. Hey, I just see him down. I'm from the goose and fit to the chatty notes. Tak Fakel is called on fit. I'm Fakel. Chin, Umnan Luzuk, Umnan the cook with your profession. Ever since we met, my life became torn apart. Yazi, Yazi, did you give it? Did so much? Turned to me as and when the Gwenzela Yongindo, the Agpegela, the Gwenzeli assignments, the Chamber and Eskind, we are on the Chomsa, we are Tisco, Kabu, Yafugu Sanzela, Pagum. How could you? How could I? How could I know any Luzuko? You were too. My name is the app. My name is the relationship, Luzuko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell her down to even Jawena. Sick and tired of this talent, sit to watch me. Brown, but you know me. Isa <laughs> I show me a dog, Chan. me as Fundi and we are beggars. Your funda are fund. We are with strategy in tone. Java look and send out a pencil from the library. I powerful and matanga to me, woman. Ha, Tong, I told me. I pelly up, son. I got you a pella. We are trash. I am a dog. Bam, Tong, I am shy at home. Wrestling pa and you don't look at faggy classes and we are little chum. Oh, Missy Shock Bape, maybe classes eat ripa, sunfish, ama blue eyes, ya boy. What a chummy wrong, a lot of supper seems to be a report. Oh, Travis, how I chummy about Sigana Pitina. It's none of our business. It is our business. Gender-based violence prevention is my business. Gender-based violence prevention is your business. Gender-based violence prevention is everyone's business. We all need to take a stand against gender-based violence because if we do not, the violence continues. We need to take stand against gender-based violence because gender-based violence is a human rights issue and we all need to be activists. We need to take a stand because gender-based violence has a very negative impact on individuals. We need to fight the scourge of gender-based violence in our campus. We need to end gender-based violence in our campus. If you do not know where to report gender-based violence in our campus, here is, a to here is our 24-hour helpline. This is a number that you can contact anytime. If you become aware of any GBV case happening on campus, affecting you directly or indirectly, this is the number that you can contact. It's 072-684-5864. 072-684-5864. We also have our offices located outside the main gate. When you... End, when you by the main gate, you will see the direction to our offices. And also, there are champions that you can approach. The champions wearing reflectors in the, in the venue right now. They are GBV champions. You can always go to them at any time to report GBV cases. We also have a Facebook page, which is UFH, um, Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit, a TikTok handle as well. You, 
UFHGBV Pre Prevention Unit. Yes. Kulom telim kini. Suska kalega mas telung kena. Sabila nel kelu zinga kuiz, gogo nis kain sale in jenga kuiz in gonyezi. Di kataleka buka ibin, di kokli so zing reti tis in begi jala. Puti, putakalo tobala be tola sisi. Aizo zanjen no gombe sangazu pinga el pinga leo ezi. Di jagaji wenda jablege jale in jing in a jala. Go to bichala linge sini, di kapelin is selling bakwanza sana, gobanam linzasa in kwebil. Bakanye and the city in Chonele Mini Langa Ubunzu, Bobsukong and Nanyanga, Bunkakafula, Amaz, Yokana Kaga, Unganga Memes and Ditimna, Mna and Dinasono, Esami Sazel, Sim Shope, Kwanjang and Yangas, Kazim Lokelanga, Agusan Lazo, Dual Azamangelela, Majatanga, Kokon, Pefumo, Mabango Pongwan, Ipongo, Lin Pele, Kauki, the Popile, Domias Matilen, our Shukanga Bia, because I sent his one. La Pela Ganja Loke Kamvalam Lipel and his senti longwini. Tulula is quebo that manch in dinechala. Ukubali cha looks in the soba mubom in your felon tilongwini. Ukubali cha looks lela bubukwenga and saikunza. Nam sanjen totoza wasim nyama is a sale ban beki chala look pa kabula is sans look or sechi no one tem sutando. Ban bake is cholo batting him suke lay and nebem sula by us in so suku by evic and a go munon to a bingo abo. Calogon de Lonebez in Chink and Ganyan Mrs. Gav Victoria and Buyazuns Luns of Suk and Tuamatagani. De Lonebuyazuns Luns of Suk, a couple legos that came like a epochalism of Shaba. De Lonebez in Dago Pong, Geba Zalini Batet and Renuian Yazel. De Lille Shobeni Batti, Ea Babini, Aingenua. Yeah, he born again. We will let you get up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he born again. Funu ifaga go petwe. Yeah. Funu ifaga go petwe. This in this ah, in this in this ah. Boy is cold. Thank you, mother. Boy change. This is change. Hi, but what are you doing? Hi, but. When's the ganjo go come down? Oh, I I I am the female I am the victim. Gonna show him my true colors. Oh, Benge kondo ke benhlala na yeke ni nyamezelo londo ayikuthi kwemna namhlanje uvele wandi betha mama ndi bethile ukubuhlungu kanibonisa mntana ngaba lameli lapha siyako kodwa ngokulona libonakali ubuhlungu kodwa ngubuhlungu ko into society nale hey zanga ndaxaqo singenelwe ngamanzi endlini ngoku we deal with different cases in different ways. The means in that also solve the cases as in je. We cases as in je. We are kufunye kubasi ve amakalo mabi na banduan. Ukwanza la baza stala unobangela wa yongele nba usukelepi. Siko na inda wazokufumana ngeto. We SCU na we GPV unit. United, we can fight this war. Together, we, we can. can. I think I need some time away. I took a little time. I pray we gonna be alright. Okay, alright. Okay, alright. Okay. I think I need some time away. I took a little time. I pray that we gonna be alright. Okay, alright. Okay, alright. 
Okay, all right, okay. Let's give the drama team another round of applause. That was absolutely phenomenal. My favorite was the lady in the, in the black boots. <laughs> um, I greet you yet again. Um, we're entering the next phase of uh, today's proceedings. And I have the lucky position to be a moderator for the first time ever. So please be kind. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about gender-based violence. So this is going to be like a talk show, very interactive. So I presume there's mics that the audience will be able to access. And everyone, are you, is the panel mic'd? Okay, can, can we please have some mics sent up to the panelists as I introduce them? Um, all right, so firstly, we have um, Professor Olofsson over there. You can give her a round of applause. <laughs> so she's part of the task team that actually put together the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit, right? And then we have Mr. Nyambi um, from Campus Protection Services. Ah, oh, over there. <laughs> and then we have Ms. S. Ngosha from the Residence Department. And then we have Mr. Lungi Makosiso, the HIV and AIDS Manager. And then we have the President, Umonga Meli. SRC president, our leader. <laughs> Mr. Apelele. And then from the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit, we have advocate Palisa Mpapa. <laughs> and then from the Student Counseling Unit, we have Ms. Team Sengana. And then from Employee Wellness, we have Mr. Jafta. And then I'm a VIP, I'm a student reps. We've got Tusimpiwe. We've got Akuma B. We've got Levi. We've got Umishali. And then we've got Mabaso. <laughs> All right, so this panel was carefully selected and curated because these are people who have so much input when it comes to gender-based violence. Some of them have lived it, some of them have witnessed it, and some of them have contributed to making it stop. So we're going to be delving into discussion with these honorable panelists. Um, just quickly delving into gender-based violence statistics. One in three women is abused in their lifetime, and one in four men is abused in their lifetime. Just to mention an interesting story quickly. Um, there was a guy I was dating, ex, and we were talking just about our previous relationships and in talking about our previous relationships, he went on to tell me about his first sexual experience. He was 12, and the woman involved was 21. So he said to me, he goes on to tell me, yeah, I broke my virginity at 12. I'm like, Johnny, because you're not even of consenting age yet. And he looked at me puzzled, what do you mean? And I said, well, if you think you were in a relationship with that person, you were statutory raped. 
and he was shocked. And I, this piqued my interest, this shock that someone didn't know that they were abused. And I found that most men, or let me not say most, but many men have been sexually assaulted or raped and they don't even know it. So that side of gender-based violence needs attention as well. Now, to start with the conversation, I'm going to start with the first question. And this is going to be directed at you, Professor, firstly. And then we can have one of the students um, and then some of the audience as well participating. This is going to be very interactive. Ni right? Don't sleep. <laughs> All right, so, Professor, why is it important for everyone in our university to work together to stop gender-based violence? Thank you. The answer is very simple, and that is that together we are stronger. And unless we work together, we are not going to be able to overcome this issue that we all face. In terms of a safer university space, that is something that is important for each and every last one of us. It is important for us as staff. It is important for us as students. We cannot work well. We cannot study well unless we have a safe space in which to do that. And therefore, it is important that we all work towards that. In terms of um, our needs, we need to take care of these basic things first before we can ensure that our other needs are fulfilled. In terms of all of us working together, Everybody should be their brother and their sister's keeper at Fort Hay. Why? Because we are a community. Like it or not, we are a community. And as a community, we need to stand together and we need to stand up for each other. Everyone here knows what Ubuntu means. It means that I am only a person through other people. And in terms of being a person, I cannot be a good or a flourishing human being unless the people around me are flourishing as well. And so it is important that we take care of each other. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, fighting gender-based violence is a collective effort. And speaking of collective efforts, I just want to jump over to Usim Piwe. You and I had a short exchange this morning and you told me that you were a GBV PU agent. Is that correct? Yes, that's and, correct. And this is one of you guys. She's a student. So because she's an agent in this important organization, you clearly know that it's important for us to work together against gender-based violence. Why? What made you join? What made you become an agent? Um, okay, thank you for the question. What made me join primarily is my personal experiences and coming into an environment where I thought that people had knowledge and coming in and finding out that it's actually not what I thought it was. And I've always been someone that likes to spearhead change. And so I went out um, and the first time I knew the unit, it was doing a Color the World campaign. And Prof will um, attest to this. I was so curious. I was just like, Prof, how do I become a part of this? Because for me, it is not about the events, but it is more about the impact that the, the unit makes. So wherever there's impact, that's where you'll find me. And because of the scourge and the prevalence of this um, pandemic that we are faced with, I saw it important that I take a part, not only because I'm also a survivor of GPV, but also because I have a younger sister that's growing. You know, I have... Um, siblings, I have cousins, there are people in this university. This year I'm a mentor mainly because I want to make sure that first year students are known that they are not to be taken advantage of there and they have someone safe that they can go to. So I joined this, um, this amazing unit because of the work they do and the impact they have. Although at the time I felt that it was not seen 
I knew that the time was coming that their work will be realized, and I wanted to be a part of that. Mm. Now, we're not going to put pressure on the panelists only to contribute to the answer to these questions. Do we have a mic in the audience by any chance? All right, I'd like a volunteer. If no one volunteers, I'm picking you. <laughs> so, vote vakar. All right, so audience, I, I, I'd like some of your input. Um, perhaps we can start off with a student in the audience. Any volunteers? We have a hand over here. The lady in the green. Ubani Kamalakosis. Greetings to you all. My name is Mbalentle Kongo, and I have a question. My question is directed to the um, Students' Counseling Unit. My question is, um, do you think there are enough employees working at the unit, seeing that the, the student counseling is almost always fully booked, and what steps are being taken to accommodate the influx of first-year students each year so that they each get the help that they need and a safe environment timely, and not for them to wait uh, a term for them to get to that space? Okay, good question. So this one we give to Ms. Team Sengen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I think uh, over the years, the university has actually prioritized the mental health and capacitated the unit. So you might have seen that we have now a, a mixture of psychologists, um, qualified psychologists at the Alice campus. We recently recruited a male psychologist as well to deal with the male-related um, issues. So the unit is well capacitated with professionals. We have a social worker as well. Um, what also is important is that uh, we have student programs that are actually of preventative nature. So, for example, the first-year students, there's a mentorship program that is catered for them to make sure that we are helping them in the adjustment and, you know, uh, making sure that they know their way out or way in, in the university space. So there's a lot of, uh, before you even get to see a psychologist, there are many programs that will catch a student um, the rest talks that are happening in residence is also preventative to ensure that the, the mental health spaces are not only at SCU but within the campus. The same way that we want a safe uh, campus as far as GBV is concerned, but we also want a space where students can talk about issues that impact their mental health outside the SCU, in your residences, in your own spaces. So we're creating now spaces outside the counseling room and say let's have a conversation around mental health. I hope that answers you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sengana. Um, any staff members willing to participate in the audience? Any volunteers? Okay, we have a staff member in front here. Can we please give her the mic? Okay. So Ma, I'm throwing this question at you now. Why is it so important to work together against gender-based violence? Are you asking question or you ask question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you answer me, I'll let you answer, ask, ask a question. Uh, it is very important to be acting all together to keep the gender-based violence to its knees. And it is doable and we can achieve it we can have this college a free, a free gender-based violence place for 365 days. It all depends to you guys. Because uh, the stakeholders here, they need to be multi-sectoral. The unit cannot do this alone. It's going to take you guys, it's going to take your staff, it's going to take the police services around, it's going to take every government office here in Raymond Mshaba, it's going to take the NPOs, it's going to take the CBOs, the CSOs, the CSFs in the communities, which is where the space where I, I am in. Can I ask my question now? Yes. <laughs> okay. I, actually, the question is to the university. Uh, I am from the Raymond Mklaba Rapid Response Team on gender-based violence, which is uh, an almost uh, dead organization because uh, we don't have funding. The driveway office for that unit is supposed to be the SPU office. Unfortunately, there are no funds, but as the 
NPOs, the NPCs, we are doing the work. Now, I want to know from the university, because whether we like it or not, the, the source of the gender-based violence in your institution, it comes from liquor. Now, you are with the over 18, they are adults on their own. Now, with this new unit, I'd, I would like to know on, and understand how is the university going to curb this so that we don't get murders at 3 a.m. under the bridge, so that we don't have any discovered bodies after some time. How is the university going to handle the matter of liquor access to the students? Thank you. Okay, advocate, I think this one is for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for that question, and we really appreciate the presence of our civil society organizations, our internal and external stakeholders. It is indeed not um, the entire responsibility of the unit. It is everybody's business to prevent gender-based violence. And in an effort to address the issues that you're talking about, we have, and we have started initiatives, we have started engagements, with the external stakeholders. That's why you are seeing our SAPS officers within. A lot of stakeholders that you see here, um, the Provincial Liquor Board, are here because of those kind of initiatives. We have also engaged proactively with the Raymond Clara Municipality. That's why when we go to our second stage of our program, the mayor is gonna be speaking. It's because of those kind of initiatives where we have started conversations to say how do we address the problem because whatever is happening within the university um, also affects the broader university or the broader Raymond Klaba community because as the university we do not operate as a silos we are a microcosm of society within the the, the country at large, we know that South Africa is in a crisis as far as gender-based violence is, is concerned, and hence there is no way that we can achieve to address gender-based violence on our own. We are actively engaging. This is why also you are seeing all the stakeholders on board, because we are saying it is through the collaborative effort. It is through everybody who is a member of the university community taking it upon themselves to say, not in my name, not in my presence, that such things will happen again. Thank you very much. I hope I've answered you. Thank you, advocate. Moving on, I'm going to focus on the students over here. I'm a VIP. Um, I'm sure some of you have been affected by gender-based violence in one way or the other, correct? Simpiwe also told us about her experience. Um, I'd like to ask one of you, um, have you or anyone that you know been affected by gender-based violence? Thank you so much for the question, ma'am. Uh, I'm very happy for the question because you're asking a man that kind of a question mm. because the reality of the man is seeing uh, a daughter, Yeah. Uh, yes, I've known someone who was affected by the matter and I've dealt with such matters in several times. And the major thing, and the major thing I always tell people, report the case immediately. And I want to tell all the females here and all the people here, it's not even about him pushing you or being hard. That one slap simply means GPV. Mm. And also all the speakers before me have been saying it. It's not even about the GPV you need. Mm. Us in our, we know our rooms, what are they doing? And also we must all know, not only focus on the GPV when you are on campus or what. We know the places we go to. We can't deny the fact that Umama was just saying the liquor problem. Students go to places like disco and all that. But when you see a student from UFA, you see someone, you know, what are you doing to prevent that case? The major thing is that we need to see ways to prevent it. And also, if we know someone who present, you know, in the end, 
when we come to our parents and tell them, but we've been sexually abused, I told us, if, let's put this in a, in, a, in a form of a stepfather. Some of them, most people have been affected by this. Most students or most people have been affected with the fact that the stepfather is uh, bringing income into the house. Mm. And then if you are affected by the stepfather, they say, Tula, because I'd rather let that Ntombo appear with immediately effect than tolerating the things. So mm. it's us to say, you know your roommate, what does it do to his girlfriend or uh, mm. girlfriend? But you must also do something with immediately effect. Don't keep it. So that if someone comes to you, don't judge the person and ask, what are you wearing? That is the most question I don't like. Mm. What were you wearing? Do these old grannies wear short things? Do these two months old wear short things? That is the problem. So I encourage all of you to be part of it. And also, not only be part when it's your relatives or your sister, mm. but be part when the person next to you, if some people can come to you and say, Mamba, so I don't like how one man is holding me. I, as a man, I need to take an action. Lord, stop what you are doing. I thank you. Mm. Thank you, Mabaso. I, I think he touched on something very important. The excusing of gender-based violence based on what someone is wearing. It's not like a six-year-old wearing a miniskirt shouldn't en enlist any kind of lust from someone. What if it's a baby? Because babies are raped. What did the baby do? What did the baby wear? All they wear is napkins. What could possibly encourage someone to abuse a baby? Thank you for touching that on Mabaso. Um, I want to move on to another student, Michali. Um, first of all, yes or no, have you or someone you know been affected by gender-based violence? Yes or no? Hello, yes, I know someone that has been uh, affected by gender-based violence, and that is myself. Yourself? Yes. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Um, how did that impact you? How has it impacted your life? And I don't want you to be scared of being as detailed in this as possible because we need to get used to being uncomfortable. Don't think about how comfortable everyone is. They need to hear this. Uh, yeah. This was way back, but I think one of the things I remember very well is uh, how it impacts you mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, you try to rationalize it that, uh, you know, he didn't mean it that way. He it had good be. intentions, yeah, and so stuff. So I tried to rationalize it to myself and think, ah, there's no way he ma he meant bad. As the um, Mabaso mentioned, mm. it was the stepfather. So it was like, no, he loves me. That's why he would hit me. That's why he would do those things. Mm. So it was mentally, and then it took a long time for me to understand that, hey, this is actually very wrong. Mm. I never once uh, in those years actually thought to report it. Mm. I never once thought, I'm like, nah, it's my stepfather. He wouldn't dare to hurt me and stuff. So it took long for me to understand. And also the education of EGBV is important mm. for me to realize that, wait, I was actually... Um, abused and this was not normal and yeah so uh, it's definitely mentally more than physical mm. because the mental scars they stay confidence my confidence was plunging yeah. down and I used to seek a validation from other people I didn't have self-love in myself mm. so I had to slowly build it up and realize that hey this was not my fault and yeah that's thank you now, I want to push this back to the audience. Do we have another student volunteer? Okay, I'm going to pick now. Shooting's okay, Tamanj. Okay, so I want to put, what's your name? Please introduce yourself. Maureen, I am a student uh, I'm the current SRC project and entertainment officer. Oh. Uh, was a round of applause, perhaps. <laughs> so, Budi, sing your booze again, man. Does it have to be a question, or can I just uh, comment or have an input? So, okay. So, 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 just for clarity's sake, right? Um, there is going to be a segment where the audience can ask some questions, but right now we're asking you the questions. So, have you or anyone you know been affected by gender-based violence? Yes, that has happened before. Actually, it happened uh, 
Let me say my niece. It happened uh, mm. in one of the family members. Uh, my niece mm. uh, was actually um, abused by a friend of mine. Your friend abused your niece? Yes. Wow. And uh, it actually, it was a very difficult time because... Mm. I couldn't really understand uh, how do you call a person, a friend, a, a person you, you bring at your own home, allow that person to have access, and then the same person goes to a point of doing this thing. But fortunate enough, um, the family where I come from, I would say we, we have what you call a backbone. So actually, we were, we were very much uh, good at at entertaining this kind of thing. We, we knew how to take care of this matter because as soon as the child came home telling us that she's feeling these kind of things, she's mm. having these kind of problems mm. in her area there, mm. which I don't really think I should mention. Um, my mother quickly took her to hospital. She didn't bath her. She just quickly took her to the hospital and then uh, to the police station where she was checked and all that stuff. And then we just immediately opened up a case and it was a very long and difficult one. It even went to a point where families uh, in our area uh, became enemies and all that stuff. Mm. But then uh, it was a, a very difficult thing mentally because people were like, no, she's lying. Possibly it's her uncle because the friend was trying to twist it mm. towards me as to say that why would I do that? Because why are they saying it's me? Because most of the time I say him with the child. So I would say it's him. So that thing makes you start doubting whether the environment you are living in is the environment you are supposed to be in. Mm. But then as time went on, as time went by, uh, we put it to rest. Uh, so the matter was taken care of. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, that's how, that's how it impacted on me, of which when I got here and got to understand mm. uh, what happens in the unit, that's when I realized that actually what happened back then brought me to a point where I had to know that okay, this is how you deal with these kind of things. And then if there's anyone else who goes through this kind of thing, then you know where to refer this person to. Mm. Then lastly, uh, before I sit down, there's one thing that keeps happening or there's one thing that every time this kind of a thing, which is EGBV, is being spoken about, no one actually touches upon. That is... This is not a WBV, of which women-based violence, or CBV, a child-based violence. Look at the venue. The majority of people who are here, it's females. Mm. Ask yourself, why is that the case? Mm. Shouldn't there be almost a 50-50% of people Definitely. here? That means every time when we talk about GBV, we're basing it on female and children. We don't really focus much on men. And now men have taken a point of stepping back because this thing is being made to be a woman-based violence and a child-based violence. So, so next time when we're having this kind of conversations, can we please make sure... I liked what was happening to the, to the, to the sketch that was here. Mm. It showed that it's not only women who get violated and children, but also men get that. But in terms of addressing it, men don't get the chance to address it properly. Thank right. you very much. Yeah. I, I just want to bring it back to the stage for a bit. Ms. Ngotla from Residence. Um, I, the gentleman touched on something. He spoke about... I, I, I picked up some self-blame when he was telling us his story. He, he was saying, how could I allow access how could i allow this person to access my niece um as if he didn't know the person this person was his friend you know he probably trusted him and he probably didn't expect him to have negative intentions for his niece now i want to ask you 
dealing with students in terms of residents. I'm sure you hear murmurs in the hallways, you hear some stories. Um, why is it, do you think, that people who are affected by GBV, and let's maybe just focus on students, why do they blame themselves, in your opinion? Okay, um, thank you for your question. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, I cannot have um, a, an accurate answer on that one, but I myself have, have experienced uh, a brutal system of mm. the university as a student mm. then. Um, where I, a person threw like a hate speech towards me. Mm. That person was a prominent political figure, an SRC member at the time, where he said that I, you just need to be penetrated, that's all, and you'll change your, how you dress and your sexuality. Hmm. And I immediately went to the campus security then, not this one, please, I'm not attacking anyone. Um, there were no GPV policies in place mm. at the time. They were no, uh, there was not a GBV office. I went to report the case and then the, the, immediately the person that was writing down my statement asked, who did this, who said this to you? And I, I mentioned his name and he said, and he laughed. Hmm. And there was a smirk in his face and I was like, okay. Um, I was obviously waiting for them to call me again. I was yeah. never called, it was just shoved under the carpet. But now being a staff member and witnessing a changing university where it has its policies in place. Mm. Yes, maybe we are not 100% there yet, but you can see the effort from, 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 from students, from SRCs, mm. from, from my colleagues. Because at the end of the day, I can never do it alone in the residences. There, there was a case of a student just two years ago, mm. a student, a third, it was a finally student, uh, no, third year um, education student mm. that was raped outside campus, was on their way to campus. Um, she was actually raped in a taxi. Wow. And she is, um, she, uh, is sexuality, yeah, okay. unfortunately she was, uh, she, was, she was only dating women, she was, a, she was a girl. She had never slept with a man before, but then she was, okay, assaulted on the way to the residence. Whilst looking at that footage, I could see her walking in, inside the residence. She was at, um, at gunpoint. Mm. The taxi dropped her in front of the residence and she was just told to keep quiet and enter the residence. I could see her in that footage holding tears and then immediately when she started turning, so now the, the taxi would, couldn't see um, her um, towards the, the room. Mm. She started screaming. Everyone woke up. I had to handle that, but the prompt response I received from the GPV unit, the social workers, I have never seen that before, because yeah. I was able to call, um, at that time, I think U Prof was, mm. was um, um, the, in that department, and then I immediately called, and then she, she was there on the scene, um, and, and the student counseling unit was assisting. So in cases like that, obviously we'll blame ourselves because of what the perpetrators are telling yeah. us, that we're not good enough. And, right. But now, having staff members that are willing to support and, and, and show that we are against this, we're not for it, and having people that are not gonna judge you, because before, obviously, when you were raped, um, people all, I mean, uh, students like throwing words, such as if you're walking around wearing miniskirts and they'll tell you, uh, and they'll have whistles, um, you know those nasty yeah. comments. But now, there are no people that are telling us now, um, okay, because you are wearing this skirt, that person has had a right to talk to you. So to answer your question, I can never be accurate in answering that mm. one, but because of our perpetrators and our journeys, because remember, we are not, um, we don't start our life here at universities. We have um, lives before, obviously other students might yeah. have been, might have experienced this growing up. So there are so many triggers around the university as well. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I think you touched on something very important. I can't believe that even in this generation, corrective rape and corrective abuse is still a thing. As if abusing someone will make them change miraculously the kind of people they're attracted to. It makes no sense. So thank you for, 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 for touching on that. Now I'm going to get into the next question. We're going to start with the student counseling unit, Ms. Msengana. Um, I want to ask you, how does the SCU play a role in addressing gender-based violence and supporting survivors just on a daily basis? How does that work? All right, thank you so much. 
So, um, because we are a unit that is a professional, professionally trained, um, we, we are able to handle crises, right? So sometimes a student will be in crisis, right? Depending on what the issue is and when it happened. So we respond um, during crisis times immediately, so that is providing trauma debrief, because gender-based violence, um, it doesn't matter which kind of GBV, can be traumatic to a student. And I'm, I say student, not male or female, just a student, any mm. student. It can be traumatic for them. Um, and then after the trauma, what will happen is, is there will be a, a disorganization that happens in the life of a student, the yes. academic life, right? Um, so we also play um, a role in supporting a student to make sure that there's intervention in the academy, that is the support. We communicate with the faculties to let them know that there is a situation that a student is dealing with so that there's going to be empathy on the side of the, the academic side, right? Because that means there's going to be disruption in the yeah. life of a student academically. So our role is not just responding, providing counseling to the student and trauma support, but also making sure that there's provisions that are made because they're here to study. And like the student said, their, their mental health becomes affected so that they can't focus on their studies. So we have to make sure that there's provisions made, right? Sometimes a student has to take some time off um, from their studies. We have to um, be cognizant of that and make sure that the student is supported. So it is a holistic support that we provide to our students um, and making sure that the mental health is a priority um, when we are dealing with issues of GBV. Okay. Practical answers. I like practical answers because we can actually imagine this happening. Thank you. Um, my next question I'm going to shoot to Mr. Makosiso. So, Mr. Makosiso, I've got you listed here under two umbrellas. I have you listed as an HIV AIDS manager at the school. And I also have you listed under disability unit. Can you just clarify if you're both or just one? <laughs> Both. Both. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> All right. So I, I'd like to, to shoot this question to you, Mr. Makotiso. Um, in, in the context of, of HIV AIDS and supporting gender-based violence survivors, uh, okay, maybe let me ask this first. Have, have you um, experienced students being affected by HIV AIDS because of gender-based violence? All right, uh, thank you, uh, Program Director and uh, Molweni. Uh, I'm very excited to be part of this, first of all. Let me also say, indeed, gender peace violence is our business as the union. Yes, it is. It is. So, uh, to respond in your question, yes, of course, we, we, we normally have those situations. But what, what we normally do, as, as, as a university under student affairs, we have the department that we're working together with, you know. So if I experience such a case, I know where to refer the student. Because our department, Solori, uh, the HIV and AIDS, is, is meant to do awareness campaigns on HIV and AIDS and, and practicing safe sex and preventing uh, unwanted pregnancies. Mm. So when we experience uh, cases like that, we know there is student counseling unit. We have a good understanding to refer our students, you know, and we also form support groups of our students, mm. you know, so that they can talk, they can discuss our issues. We also invite the professionals to come and share their aspect, you know, mm. in the discussions. Because when you put some a professionalism in the discussion, it carries a weight for our students. And also, uh, under the umbrella of HIV and AIDS unit, it is also important to involve people that are affected. Mm. Because we all know that is a, social, is a societal issue, the issue of HIV and AIDS unit, I mean, uh, HIV and AIDS. Mm. So we, we, we also invite people that are living with HIV and AIDS to, 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 to share their experiences uh, with our students mm. so that their students can have hope in the future. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to shoot another question towards you um, because you're also representing the disability unit. And I, as someone, I, I, I could say from the outside looking in, I feel like people who are disabled are underrepresented. So how do you support them? How do you support disabled people who are affected by gender-based violence? 
All right. Uh, thank you I'm very much. I'm putting you on the spot here. No, no <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, I was waiting for that one. Uh, we have uh, set a trend as a university to make sure that we include our students with disabilities in everything that we do. You know? We, we, we adopt that thing that said, nothing for us without us. Mm. So they speak for themselves, you know? We, we, I normally have the sessions with them personally and, 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 and ask them, what is your feeling, mm. you know? Have you been in a relationship? What happened to you, you know? Because I understand, uh, my understanding is that each and everyone needs to have a relationship. Mm. Either uh, it can be a friendly relationship or the other relationship, you know? We all are human. So we will have those sessions to discuss those issues, you know? Yeah. And I, I, can, I can tell you that our student, we have an open door policy. Our student can come anytime to my office to discuss their problem with me and, and, and my staff members. So in, in, any time when we get such, you know, the issue in, in, in disability is the, the inclusivity yes. and involvement. Right. You must make sure that you involve the student with disabilities in every program that you do in the university. So this is what we are doing currently mm. as the university. Thank you. Thank you. Are we still here? Are we still awake? Don't worry, I'll involve the audience soon, again. Um, now I'm gonna direct this to employee wellness, Mr. Jafta. Um, Gender-based violence does not only affect students, but I'm sure it affects employees as well. I can imagine the kind of impact this can have in their day-to-day -day and how they interact with students. In your experience representing employee wellness, what is the role that you play against gender-based violence to protect your employees Thank or fellow so colleagues, rather? Thank you so much for the question. Uh, I think for me, uh, if I needed to explain to you the role of employer wellness, it is to basically state that the employer wellness unit is there to take care of any life challenges that employees experience during the time of employment within the institution. And to sort of do that with the necessary empathy, mm. to uh, make people understand that they are being cared for, to do that in a way that demonstrates, uh, um, you know, um, confidentiality. Mm. Uh, and I would like to re return to the confidentiality aspect uh, later. But also in a way that people feel that um, they are not being judged in an unjudgmental manner mm. for whatever reason. And I think if you look at the GBV, you know, sort of incidents for, for that matter, it is important for us to understand that this employee that comes here, as you in your main uh, uh, address indicated earlier, mm. when you become a survivor of GBV, mm. you've got to balance so many different challenges in your life. There's family, there's church, there's many different aspects. Yeah. But there's also the work. And you need to portray that image of being a very happy employee. Yes. And you cannot and strong. do that. You cannot do that mm. when you've got this burden that you're carrying with you. Mm. And one of the things that we're trying to inculcate in the unit is to understand that this person coming here could be facing a number of different challenges and we need to be sensitive in the manner in which we support mm. that particular employee. Mm. Uh, so that is the one thing that I wanted to say, and we've also got, uh, currently we are out of contract with the service provider that we would use, but we also work closely with the GBV unit, mm. and we also want to work closely with all of the other units sitting here, because I don't think it is right for us to come and meet you under these glamorous lights and cameras and so on. There's work that needs to happen also behind the scenes where yeah. we can break down our silos, because at the end of the day, we are one university, we are one family, and we need to demonstrate that in the way that we offer integrated services so that everybody can feel that my needs are being catered for within this university. But also at a policy level, mm. and uh, I'm happy that uh, um, my one colleague spoke about the policy level because 
many of the policies of the university have lagged behind in previous years, and you would know that within the legislative field, policy uh, fields, there's been a number of different changes. And it's important for us to go and review those policies so that when a particular case comes to the employee relations unit for discipline, yeah. that our policies are up to it so that the person or the case does not fall through the cracks. Yeah. And we need to sensitize our, our HR uh, colleagues about these changes. So a lot of our work would also in, uh, involve advocacy work, awareness, making them aware of those changes so that we ultimately are able to respond to the needs of our mm. GBV service and to our employees as a whole. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jeffter. Nisa Kona. Um, so, I'm going to now shoot a question to Mr. Nyambi from Campus Protection Services. And I welcome any student or staff in the audience who has any question for Campus Protection Services. Note the importance in terms of GBV. You're welcome to ask a question. So, I want to ask you, sir, what steps are being taken to make campuses safer, especially in the areas that have been identified as gender-based violence zones? Uh, thank you very much, Program Director. Um, before I jump into what these steps just to perhaps uh, touch base on the strategic objective of the department it's we are campus protection services to create safe and secure environment for all which it involve uh, students staff um, properties on the other side because the, the gender-based violence does not touch such as well as visitors but um, before you put uh, security measures in place, in most cases in, in forms by incidents which you just mentioned, gender-based violence, um, of late um, there are several things that I will mention which we have done to try to um, put it in place to make sure that it mitigates no, uh, the gender-based violence does not happen. Um, uh, firstly, since uh, we are working hand in glove with different stakeholders in involving gender-based violence, we become the first contact of gender-based violence. Uh, it reaches our office, mm -hmm. and, and, and in that, we, we really appreciate the existence of the gender-based violence because um, understanding the, and seeing the gap within the unit, they went an extra mile to train all of our officers. We, here in Alice, we are having um, um, in-house residences. They've trained everyone. Mm. And in East London, it's um, um, uh, leased residences, which is outsourced. So, so the need we saw the need that it also needs to be stretched, regardless that is an outsourced services. But those people must, because they are they are they are, they are, they are living with our students on a daily basis, mm. they need to be empowered when it comes to that. But uh, zooming back into um, um, which measures have been done through the identified places, um, of late we. The unit have crafted um, what we call um, patrol module. Okay. Um, this patrol module it informs by um, the layout of the campus. I'll, I'll, I'll relate to to Alice campus. We we have clustered the campus into five zones. There is mm -hmm. female section, male section, as well as um, um, staff, I mean student village and east camp, as well as admin block, which is lecturing halls. Mm. Um, there is load shedding now, which we also saw it fitted that we must have um, lightning within the, the places which are dark during load shedding. These uh, zones I've mentioned, I think we, we're having sufficient court bike where every zone is having um, um, a court bike, which we also patrolling with other means of foot patrols. Mm. Um, we further have identified, which I think um, we are working on that, to publish it to students, our safer route. We, we have started this thing last year already during exams, whereby we, we, we want our students, when they come from enjoying themselves from outside, if mm. they are not feeling safe, they must know that our office is the first office to contact. 
uh, they must come to seek escort, but um, there is a safer route which we have identified in order for our students to walk on those routes feeling safe as well as being patrolled. Mm. But furthermore, we sometimes uh, a naked eye cannot see beyond. We, we, the university in, is in the process of embarking on, on installing the systems which must, integrate, uh, must be integrated with our physical security to monitor and pick up um, uh, such things happening in the docks where people m must not supposed to walk in such places. Um, uh, when the gender-based violence um, office opened, um, they've, they've requested the security need. I think off late we, we have installed the beams there as well as the alarm systems for their office to be um, that safe. Mm. Um, apart from that, we are going to also install the CCTVs, which is part and parcel of, 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 of our duty from our side to create that safe and secure environment. But, but in the main, we, 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 we fed um, um, another speaker mentioned the issue of interacting with the external stakeholders. We, 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 are having, we are initiating meetings to see how we can um, 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 end the issue of, mm. of the gate because they go enjoy themselves, come gather at the gate, which becomes the, the, the hot spot of, of, of gender bail. Previously, um, um, rapes happened there. There are a lot of things happening outside when, when, when they're at that state of mind. Mm. So we, we, have, we are engaging with the relevant stakeholders to try to make sure that we diffuse whatever that is happening uh, to avoid such from happening. But uh, for now, um, uh, those are done um, um, in order to make sure that uh, our students are safe in, in that perspective. Mm. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nyambi. Uh, I'm not sure how we're doing in terms of time, but I would like um, someone in the audience, do, do you have a question for Campus Protection Services? Okay. Simpiwe on the stage. Okay. So my question to the Campus Protection Services is that, and this is a pending issue right now, um, we not we, but you talk about safety of students on campus and off campus. Recently, we have noticed that you have stopped CAP services on campus, which is a very huge inconvenience for students. There's nothing that the university can do stopping students from going to day school, right? But this, the university can do something to make sure that they get to campus safely. So when you stop CAP services, how do you expect them to get on campus safely without shuttle services? And when you do... And when you do stop cab services, when you do stop cab services without telling us a reason why you are doing it, it becomes a very huge inconvenience. And not only be, uh, because of safety of people that come from disco, realistically, town is far. We have groceries that we need to carry. It's very unfair that you expect us to carry six, seven plastics from spa all the way to student village. So I need you to address this issue and in the same light, SRC, what are you doing to ensure that we have shuttle services for students that live off campus because library closes at 12 midnight? How do they then study and get to their places safely? So I don't know how you're going to answer these questions, but please, um, uh, CPS, I don't know where you got the instruction from, but wherever you got the instruction from, they should have given you a reason. So can you please tell us and the entire student community why you stopped the CAP services and what is the alternative? Thank you. Um, thanks for the question. Uh, firstly, to start with, it, um, I'm, I'm a compliance officer of the institution. Uh, cab services, it's more of um, exchanging, it's a trade of service, you, you climb, they pay, of which I think is against student rules, it starts there. However, um, um, why are we stopping from our side is if you are not informed that it's um, a, a committee uh, which is sitting, is called Triple SC. The matter was brought forward to, to, to able to discuss the, the task team has been assembled to see it fit. Uh, for your knowledge, we have been engaging with the uh, primary stakeholder, which is a taxi association, 
No matter that you are at spa, you want to come to campus with a cab. Is the road, that road belongs to Texas Association. To <laughs> at this date and time, as we speak, we have drafted uh, um, in collaboration with the Student Affairs or the task team which was assembled, including SRC. We have drafted an MOU. It was presented not uh, even once, but I believe this time is for the last time to an extent that the same very um, memorandum of understanding, it will be presented at the Taxi Association annual general meeting in order for them to give us go ahead. Believe in me, regardless, you, we, there is a need for students to, 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 to commute from SPA to here. And the challenges which are around that, uh, without the blessing of Taxi Association, it might, tank, it might take a wrong direction. For, for an example, uh, in those meetings when we're gathering, Texas Association complained to say, it's fine, you are cabbing, but you end up taking people to Queenstown. The same very cabs. It, now they are taking their roads to somewhere. They have been observing that, but they don't want to act. But they prefer the way we have approached it to come and sit down to resolve and have an amicable solution. But. Um, at this date and time, uh, the matter is it's, it's sitting with them. We'll have a feedback and conclusion as a way forward. But it, unfortunately, um, as Campus Protection Services, uh, uh, our hands are tied to take that decision to give a green light before it's concluded in the right manner. Are you, are you answered? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I hear you. I hear you, but now the question of what is the alternative? You have uh, campus control cars that have University of Forte badges. We have a decade of renewal cars. Um, now coming to the shuttle services. If need be, we will produce a student card when I come from SPA that I'm a student of Forte so that I get transport because it is becoming an issue. And the reason why students come from disco and party at the main gate is because and now they're like, okay, you're going to have fun. But once the kite drops you off at your residence, you have no choice but to go in and go sleep. But because they kept, because they're, op let me tell you, Mr. Nyambi, they're operating now. Ne? And they drop you off at the gate. At the gate, they go there and then they party. It's another party. So now I'm asking, what is the alternative? And I'm not saying you can give me an answer now, but think about shuttle services. And not only for those purposes, but for the purposes of students that live off campus. Exam time is approaching. Great Hall closes at 11 p.m. The library at 12 midnight. How do they now come here and study and make sure they get to your residences safely? Accountability. Let's hold our people accountable. Ninga basa, babanta bata, la mele ba penduli. Guti gen zagala. For campus protection services. Okay. We have a question from the audience, Mr. Nyambi. Thank, thank you very much, Program Direct. My hands almost got tired. But my name is Lindo Gushempong. For those who don't know me, I'm the current student services officer of the East London campus SRC, the political campus. Now, uh, I want to first clarify some contradictions, that it is actually misleading or economical to the truth to say that we have sufficient shuttle services that are meant to ferry students from one point to another safely at that. Mm. And I think uh, Mr. Nyamb is not being fair and honest to the house. And I say this because I say this because we happen to sit in the same committee which discussed the same issue last week and it was resolved that that task team which must include the SRC as its primary stakeholder because the SRC raised that issue in the Student Service Support Committee that you cannot stop these caps because many students pipe are marked, are damaged mentally, emotionally, and otherwise because the security department prioritizes attacking and chasing after student leadership when there's a strike. 
Now, I don't want us to divert or divert from the content which is gender-based violence. But in Mr. Nyambi's submission, I did not hear anything about East London. Whereas two or three weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, there was a student who was held hostage next to Cedar Heights. It's a res in Southernwood. She had just come off the shuttle, which drops them at a much more central space. Bear in mind, last year in strategic planning, as acting transport manager, Mr. Nyambi said there are 10 buses coming. We're still waiting for those 10 buses. So my point is this. In Mr. Nyambi's submissions, where is East London in the geographic stratosphere of protection of students? That's the first question. The second question is, why is it that the security department is always blocking progress, particularly when it comes to the general safety of students? I'm saying this because the cab system is not different from Uber and Bolt. It's just that in East London we have Uber, we have Bolt, we have InDriver, we'll just say, if the shuttle does not pick me up, if I have money, I'll just Bolt. And even that Bolt is not safe. Mm. Because there's a proposal that we raised last year and in many other meetings that the security department must have at least one security in each and every residence to safeguard the safety. Bear in mind, some students, last year particularly females, were being marked next to the library and security would be there and say it's not my responsibility. Mm. So... How will we make our campus a safer campus, a GPV-free campus, when the department itself is not being proactive? It has to be pushed, it has to be pressured. It has to get to a point whereby some of us have to get calls at 3 o'clock in the morning, threatening us if we have to want to continue with our degrees or not. So we are not in that space yet. And I think more than anything, we've been raising this. We don't want to make it a mess meeting, but we want to raise one question. Where is East London in the geographic status of ensuring that we protect students? And secondly, why is the Taxi Association being prioritized, whereas the Taxi Association wants to meet, wants to come to a conclusion, but it's the scapegoat. Thank you. Sure. Thank, thank you, Mr. Pongo. All right, let's, let's allow Mr. Nyambi to respond. I think uh, unless you were not here, I, I was asked the question, what, the, why, um, 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 what is our safety or our business in, uh, in gender-based violence? Um, I think uh, I might not have touched the things that you wanted to hear, but um, I've mentioned the issue of the gender-based violence have trained the officers which are even outsourced since we're using in-house this site. I don't know if you've got that part, but I think I've addressed that. I do not know if ever I, I needed to extend what is the, the, the duty of, I mean, of campus protection services at large within the, the East London campus. But since we were, we were focusing on the gender-based violence, I thought perhaps I've shown case what is it that we are doing. However, uh, the least residences, uh, Mr. Pongo, it's, um, it's having systems which is different from this site. You, if you have visited our res here, it's a free flow. But when you visit East London residences, there is cameras there, there is um, access control books in place. To an extent, should you do not belong into such, uh, you do not access easily to try to protect our student outside that. We do monitor, uh, Mr. Pongo, it's just that we, we don't do those walk, walk about with you, but due to the fact that you belong into those rest, we check the compliance issue to say, is the people who are posted there um, uh, compliant with, with CIRA? I think that is another thing that is our responsibility. Uh, it's unfortunate when that incident happened three weeks ago, you said um, the, 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 the protection services didn't respond. But uh, we do not condone such. If such happens in your watch, please bring it to our office. We'll take such officers to consequence management. Um, just to add, uh, Mr. Pongo, I see, I thought I've passed the issue of cabs. And the lady, she ended up saying I might not give feedback on that. Um, uh, it's a pity I'm sitting in those meetings with you. Perhaps you, you, I didn't say it all. But at the, at the end of the day, if you recall very well, the chairperson of the same very Texas Association asked you, 
Are you here to school or are you here to, to cap? It's a, it was a valid question. It was a valid question to an extent that even the taxi association itself, even the taxi association itself, you cannot, you cannot take, most of you here, you don't own cars. And there it's, um, the, the challenges of taxi cabs is that the taxi association is aware there are people from PE giving students their cars to come and rank, and that is affecting their business since it's their route. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of things which is happening there which, which you are aware of. Maybe you want me to clarify the house, but, but there are those technical challenges which are happening, which is making uh, the cabs to be stopped. Another, another issue, this is what's happening. When students are cabbing, community have seen the opportunity to an extent that if I don't stop a student, because there's no control wherever they're taking students, I'll, top, I'll stop that one of community. So we do not resolve the problem at large. However, there were, there were resolution out of that meeting to say this is the way we need to go and move forward. Okay. Like I said, we're waiting for the feedback concerning mm. that. Mm. But I think, Mr. Pongo, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are doing our level best to try to shape up our safety and security issues within campus to make um, our campus feel safe. For an example, even in East so, London... Sorry to cut you there, Mr. Mnyam. I'm, I'm really sorry to cut no, you there. No, it's, it's fine. Thank uh, you. We're just rushing a bit now because of time. Oh. Uh, I just want to get an indication. How much time do we have left? And yet there's still so much to unpack. Yeah. Okay. You? All right. Um, I am going to then swiftly move to... Sorry. It's not a question, it's a comment. Where, where, where is this coming from? Uh, program director. Oh. Oh, thank you for giving me a few minutes. Uh, I'm surprised that Mr. Nyambi is addressing Mr. Pongo now than addressing the issues that are raised by Mr. Pongo. Uh, each time he is talking, he is... Ref let's, let's... Each time he is talking, he is referring to Mr. Pongo than referring the, the, to, to the issues. Uh, again, to the submission from Mr. Nyambi, uh, entertaining the, the taxi industry, I don't see how is a student business that instead of capping students to campus, they cap students, to people to, to Queenstown, that's none of the students' business. The compliance from Mr. Nyambi's office is compromising the lives of students. Uh, the only thing that can be of remedy here is that the taxi industry and the, 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 they are the ones that are having the problems with the cabs. If they remove the cabs from the road, they should give students taxis then for their safety. Thank you, ma'am. All right, I just, I just want to make sure that we're all still here and we're addressing how we can tackle gender-based violence. Now, because of time, I am going to have to rush things a little bit. I want to direct this to our SRC president, Mr. Martinasi. Did I pronounce his name correctly? No, it's Mr. Martinese. It's Mr. Martinese. Sorry. You can say Mr. Martinese. Martinese. Just say Mr. Martinez. Okay, okay. My apologies. Thank you. So, Mr. President, um, you're interacting with students every single day. 
Do you have any comments, questions? Do you have any input as to how students can, what more can they do if, if, if they haven't done enough somehow to contribute in the alleviation of gender-based violence? What, what do you have to say about this whole topic as, as our leader? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Firstly, let me greet uh, the Vice Chancellor, all the MEC members, including our external stakeholders, SAPS, faculty deans, and my entire SRC, including the students uh, that are attending this program. Firstly, let me say, Pansi nge chipi vipi, Pansi. Pansi. Pansi nge chipi vipi, Pansi. Thank you very much, colleagues. Actually, uh, Yes, I think as, as the SRC, we have seen that uh, it's not uh, enough, like the initiatives that are being implemented, they are not enough. Of course, then as the SRC, uh, one will ask maybe from the floor or from the panel that what are we then doing as the SRC to make sure that we alleviate all the GPV cases that are on campus. As the SRC, we have identified some of the initiatives that we think they can be a solution to this problem. For example, we have been having external meetings uh, with the external stakeholders like SAPS, Raimo Mlaba Municipality, including the GPV unit. Some of the proposed initiatives that we have uh, came up with that, uh, even students themselves, they do have a role to play to make sure that we alleviate all the GPV cases on our campus. It is not only the role of the GPV prevention unit to make sure that our cases on our campus of GPV, they are not increasing. Then what then students can do, or what the SRC can then do, is that we can come up with initiatives of uh, education and awareness. Because it is not only the GPV prevention unit that must then come up with an awareness, even students themselves. Because remember, on campus, we do have SRC student organizations, including student societies. Then they must also come up with those awareness campaigns to make sure that we educate our peers. Because it is not only this set or this kind of program whereby we are going to be educated about awareness of GPV, but even students themselves on campus, uh, they must make sure that they have those educational sections, which is which should include workshops, seminars, and other awareness campaigns. And also, secondly, we must make sure that uh, we make sure that uh, we, we blow the whistle of having to know that the survivors of the GPV, how are they then supported? Of which I think we really appreciate the efforts that have been done by the GPV Prevention Unit, whereby now we do have safe houses in our campus. I think there's a safe house in East London, there's also a safe house also in this campus. And lastly, uh, because of time, also as students, we must make sure that we advocate for policy, for policy uh, engagements. I think one of the speakers, uh, I think Mr. Javda, did mention that we need to go to those GPV police and make sure that we review them. Because I think uh, in the University of Forte, before 2018, there was no GPV police. It was then introduced in 2018, but then even during that year, that policy took long to be adopted. It was the same students that had to march and boycott classes in 2019 for the GPV policy to be adopted. So it means that we must make sure that those policies, they are adopted and also they are reviewed. Because if you count now the years from 2018 to 2019 up to now, it's more than five years. It means that that policy needs to be reviewed of which now the, 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 the words of the students or the voices of the students must make sure that we go to that police and make sure that we amend that police. Thank you very much. Gosh, I, you know, one thing, one thing that I dislike about programs is that when things start really getting interesting, then we have to rush to finish. Because I can, hear, I can hear the frustration coming through from the students. They're the ones on the ground. They're the ones who are living this reality day in and day out. And when it's their time to actually vent their concerns, we need to now rush to quickly finish. Um, but I just want to give everyone on the platform here a, 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 a voice, well, a platform. We have two students, student reps, um, and I'd just like to hear their thoughts before we go to advocate and, and, and wrap things up. Um, Sorry. Akuma. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, just know <laughs> I'm following protocol, and unfortunately, we can't take any more uh, questions from the audience. I really do apologize. So, okay, Akuma, we have a student representative on the stage here behind me. 
um, and he would like to address um, the residents. Ms. Ngosha. All right, please go ahead, Akuma. Um, thank you so much. Um, Ms. Ngosha, I have a question for you and the residents department. I, 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 I like the fact that you, you, you referenced um, a queer member when you were talking here before, when, when you asked the question. Now, we want to know that what system is there to protect queer students against GPV, like in the residences? Thank you. Okay, thank you. As I said, um, sorry, I didn't get your name. Akuma. Akuma. Akuma, there are a lot of cases even when it comes to um, queer students. We even um, receive requests um, from students who say um, they want to uh, be isolated and stay alone as queer members. And we disregarded that as a department, as a whole, because this is an inclusive university and everyone is accepted. There are students, even in the beginning of the year, that would, be, would see that they are located with uh, queer members. Um, and would come to our office and ask to be transferred. We never allow that. We do not allow any behavior of that nature. That's why we are closely working hand in hand with um, um, societies, even with the GPV unit. I've worked with it. With a, we had a queer event um, where I, I was part of. This is not just about me, but the department as a whole. There are programs, even if you can see every weekend, the residence department does have programs. Those programs, we are able now to connect with our students because it's hard to, it's hard to operate when um, the students are there distant and we are here. So those programs assist even in, in our respective residences. We do have pro programs from time to time. Remember, the accommodation officers are not always there, but there are sub wardens who are available from the time um, the, the accommodation officers leave. So they, we have an open door policy to address anything that are affecting students. And we do work closely related with um, the, the, the other stakeholders, such as your student counseling unit and um, all the, 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 the offices that are within the dean of students. So um, to answer your question, we do not encourage that um, queer, queer members uh, to be isolated, um, to stay alone, because they are included, they are part of this university, they are as equal as everyone that is here. Thank you. Okay, and then moving on, Levi, another student representative. What, do you have a question, comment? All right, please go ahead. Um, greetings to the house at large. Um, I'd like to ask a question from Mr. Martinez. Um, the SRC president. Mm. So with regards to the gender and transformation office, transformation and gender office and understanding its crucial nature in um, preventing uh, GPV and supporting um, GPV um, uh, victims, how do you ensure that the person who is chosen for the office, which is the transformation and gender office, is adequately trained and suited for this office because of its sensitive nature. Mm, that's a good one. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lever. Uh, actually, I will do answer that question, but unfortunately then, as you are asking that, how do we make sure that the person who is chosen for that office uh, is fit uh, to lead in that transformation in general office? Uh, the reality of the matter is that uh, the, the, the people, the students, students do not choose who to lead that office, but then it's organizations that deploy uh, SRC member to that uh, office. Just to make an example, we have uh, two transformation and gender officers from East London and from Alice, and they are also part of us here. And then they are deployed by different organizations. So it's, the, it's the organizations that then determine that this person is indeed fit to lead in that, uh, in, the, in, in, that, in, that, in that portfolio of the SRC. But then we do trust our gender and transformation officers because they are working hand in hand with the GPV unit and also there are, uh, there are perhaps some programs that they will be doing with the GPV and prevention unit. And also they do like uh, attend the workshops when they are invited from the GPV unit. That's when we can make sure that they are fit. But prior to them entering office, then as individuals, we cannot be able to determine that person is fit or not because it's, we are not the ones choosing them, but then it's organizations that are deploying those SR members in their portfolios. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, now before we, we, we wrap this up, um, I'm, I'm, going to, <laughs> I'm going to move over to U Advocate um, just to draw us back to the reason why we're here. We're launching the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit officially today, a unit that is here to assist students. But just before I, I, I give her the floor, um, I just want to say that I hope that you keep holding the powers that be accountable even after today. I know that today you've been given an audience and it's perhaps not the same as day to day, but keep holding them accountable. Nibe is until things change so that things can actually be better for students. All right. Do we have a deal? All right. So, advocate, um, launch, and we're wrapping up now. I want to find out from you what are the specific measures that the GBV Prevention Unit is implementing to address gender-based violence and promote a culture of safety. Thank you so much, um, Chairperson, for that question. So as the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit, I'll talk first to the issue of policy review and development. Currently, our 2019 gender-based violence policy is under review. Um, we have started that process from last year. Some of our students have participated in the policy consultation meetings, as well as some of our staff members. Uh, residents, I can confirm residents, uh, some of the resident staff members, the wardens that have been trained last year as part of our first responder trainings have been consulted on the policy. Our campus protection services that Mr. Nyambi talked about from both campuses, East London and um, Alice, have been trained and been consulted on the policy. Some of our students in both campuses also participated. We are still in process of uh, consulting with the broader university community. Some of us are yet to get invitations in terms, because it, it, we cannot uh, consult in a broad space like this. It has to be a manageable space. We will be continuing to do that. But the intention is that um, before end of this year, we should have a reviewed gender-based violence policy, which we are working on that. Beyond that, the university is also tasked through the gender-based violence prevention unit to develop the inclusivity policy. That's another interesting dimension of our transformation for the university as part of um, the decade of renewal. We are, we have started um, in February, presence of our staff, of our internal stakeholders and external, so that we are able to see where are the gaps, who's responsible, and then we are beyond this conversation going to have a further um, initiatives with our staff, with our internal stakeholders as well as external. And this is also alongside a walkabout. It is interesting for me to let you know that we have conducted walkabouts with uh, some of the students in terms of identifying hotspots within the university community. We have so far started in Alice, done an internal and external walkabout. We are going to go into East London, do the same process. This is a part of collecting data which is also informed by the cases that we see as the university. The cases of GBV are reported to the different stakeholders and brought to us to process as part of our interventions that we put in place short-term and long-term measures um, with different departments within the university. And also as the unit, we provide support um, services or support um, initiatives to both the complainant and the respondent. And I want this to come out very clear that we provide, as per the policy, support to both the complainant and the respondent. It doesn't matter your gender or your sexuality. You are welcome to come to the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit to report a matter and you will be provided support. It doesn't matter whether you are a complainant or you came first or you are the respondent. Um, due diligence, uh, dignity is deserved by all. We need to be heard and be provided a fair hearing. Beyond that, um, we also ensure that we are intentional about preventing gender-based violence within the University of Fort Hare. That is why our unit is named the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit, hence this campaign. We are here to reclaim. We have brought everybody, all the stakeholders, to say how do we then move forward. From this process, we'll have um, other meetings where we'll definitely have an action plan and come back into the same space to report. And that's how we're trying to be accountable and bring everybody together. As we are saying today, GBV 
prevention is your business. It is not only our business, we can never achieve a gender-based violence, um, a, a free university community without bringing everybody together. So definitely, we're hoping to realize a safe university community, a safer UFH through our interventions. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, so much to unpack, so little time. Basically, I got 24 hours, see unpack, Alana, but the program must move on um, so that all the proceedings take place. That brings us to the end of the GBV talk show. I do hope that it was impactful for all of you. Um, I'm going to hand over to our host um, so that we can continue with the program. Thank you. Can we kindly give Cheryl another round of applause, please? Um, just another reminder, uh, we still have within our midst um, social workers, psychologists. I have been mandated to ask them to stand, please. Can everyone who is a social worker, Olapa, psychologist, registered psychologist, registered counselor, can you just kindly stand? Nobody, you don't work for the institution or you, can you just stand for us? Registered counselors, registered social workers. Um, can we then now wave our hands? Can we kindly take note of them? Again, in the event that you want to, thank you so much, you can, you can be seated. In the event that you want to disclose something, you want to get something off your chest, you want to vent, kindly approach them there at your disposal. Um, before we move on, you know, we, we, as we were having this, this dialogue, so many things came up, ne? And I think one of the things that I, I want to commend, um, Forte Uni, I mean, Forte students is the zeal that you guys have for what you believe in. Um, it is essential that we have a backbone. And if there's something that I am slowly realizing when it comes to our generation, it is that we are trying to have a big bone. And the reason why it is not easy to have it is because we come from homesteads where easy do are sweeped under the carpet. Where when a child is molested and raped by an uncle, it hetwa is kaya. But somehow along the lines of trying to be us and trying to chase our dreams and be ambitious, we are trying to change the narrative, even if it means exposing that uncle and exposing that father. So I want to I want to charge you as future leaders as mothers and fathers and uncles of tomorrow that it it in order for what we are doing today to be effective you need to even have meaningful constructive conversations within your circles you don't tolerate conversations that drag other people down as women you don't tolerate conversations that drag other women down as a man you don't tolerate conversations that drag women down knowing that you have a mother you've got a grand you've got an you have an aunt, you have a sister, you have a daughter. So may we be a generation that has got a backbone so that we are going to be able to advocate for Ezizin, do Ezizfunai, so that we may be able to bridge the gap between those who are in power and us so that we are able to hold them accountable. Um, before Uonga Mbochwa comes up, DJ Ngalus Lalelingom. Eh, we can look up because Nile. DJ, I lose the leling on time. Time. What was I? Can we can we just get a song to get everybody up in their spirits, if possible? As the on on onga makes her way to the stage, please. I can't dance. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you, DJ. Thank you. I was required to dance, but I can't, so excuse me for that. Um, greetings to everyone who's in this venue today. And I hope you are good. I hope you are good because this is one of the most famous venues of EUFH. For those who, who know, they know, ne? for different reasons, of course. But today, we're here to celebrate. Ne? As much as we talk about very traumatic issues, but this is a celebration. If Megu, if it was Ilobola, I would be saying we are Sitibani um, Saimindeni right now, right? Because we say this is a collaboration of stakeholders, internal and external stakeholders to come to Ecos A1, right? So if Megu Yolo, we should be dancing here. We can spend the whole day even. It's a celebration. Can we, can we look happy? Because it's a celebration, ne? Um, like Usi Sive had already said, my name is Onga Mbochelwa. I am the current GBV Prevention Unit Social Worker. And my, my job is very short, guys. I know we are, we are we're not on time, but my, my job here is very short. I'm here to introduce the Reclaiming a Safer UFH video. Ne? Um, I just want to say, though, before, before I say anything, um, I want to say... I remember Usisi said something um, about our parents um, judging or questioning us, not even our parents, but people questioning us on what was she wearing when she, wa she, she was raped? What was she wearing when she was abused in any way? And I want to remind everyone here that my clothes, this is not consent. The fact that I'm wearing a mini skirt or I'm wearing a crop top, I am not communicating any agreement with anyone. It's merely a freedom of expression, that's what it is, that's all. So it's, it's, it's not consent. So when a person questions you about what were you wearing when whatever happened to you, just don't be offended because this is just a clear um, indication of their own ignorance. Ne? Um, so according to me, our journey of reclaiming a safer UFH began five years ago when the GBV policy was successfully established. Um, this was a loud call to action, a call that echoed throughout our society saying enough is enough. This was also a testament to the power of community collaboration, which is what we hear uh, we here today for because we've noticed how um, collaboration is so important, right? So as U advocate Mbaba Mairahadi had already mentioned that to kickstart this campaign, we embarked on a journey of discovery where community members were randomly selected to participate in a walkabout in and around campus. So this was to identify unsafe spots or areas in and around our campuses and of course we had to um, we had to involve our our members because they're the ones who walk in these streets every day so of course they know what's going on the most ne? Um, so members bravely shared their story of GBV incidents and they proposed on solutions to enhance the safety and I'm very pleased to say that today, um, conversations about making these identified um, spots safer had already began with some of our external stakeholders which are here today. So we are not just talking the talk or walking the walk. We are really doing what we say we are gonna do. Or in today's language, I can say we are standing on business. Ne? Um, so, U, U, U Dr. Um, U Prof. Olufsen, um reminded me um, that as a black child, actually I am reminded of a, of a profound saying of umtu gumtu ngabantu, or it, we can say it takes a village to raise a child. Um, indeed, this wisdom extends far beyond um, child rearing. It speaks to the fundamental truth that we are strong together. This is what we're here for today, right? Because we are strong together. And we are trying to make these relationships work. Um, so today, we must embrace the truth and declare that GBV prevention is our business. Together, we can create a community free of fear, violence, and oppression. This is our ultimate goal. And it is within our reach. 
And if we work together and everybody does their part, it, is, it, it will be a success. Ne? And I just want to um, note something because I'm the social worker at Guat GBV, so I deal with, um, with all um, um, survivors or victims on campus and I also encounter a lot of males, right? And they come and say, you know, sis Onga, um, but Lomdana, Lomdana and Jenna, Ben Tugil, and then we and Coco and Lufna Dimbet, what was I supposed to do? And Ben Betil last week, Kang and Tear Temna, but now that Nan Pindisil, it's now a big deal. And I always say this thing that if you are a male or a female, but I say this mostly to, to males because they think that GBV or GBV prevention is here to protect women and when they have no voice. I say this to them, if a lady makes you feel like you want to beat them, whatever the feeling comes from, if they make you feel like you want to beat them, that's not the relationship for you. You should leave. That is self-love, by the way, males. You can't say, ah, I'm tanda, but tomorrow you're going to wake up and you say you are in trouble because of Pindisil. So if, if a woman makes you want to beat them, that's just a clear indication of a red flag. The relationship is not for you. So the good thing to do is walk away from that relationship before you get into big trouble. Vice versa with the ladies, guys. Ne? I know there was a guy that said, she even said that their relationship is opella with omnia way to dead or estoxin. And he thought that was flirtatious or something very nice to say or solidify the, the relationship. And it was the red flags that we always talk about, guys, on social media. It's a call to leave the relationship. Um, so, um, as you enjoy this video showcasing why GBV is everybody's business and not just the GBV unit, and yes, it affects everyone, like I said, it's not just business of women or business of males, but because the, the women have been the previously disadvantaged bunch and we cannot neglect that. We cannot look back and say, I, they are fine, they've been talked about a lot now, it's time to move on. We can't say that, they're the previously disadvantaged bunch, guys. We have to address that. So it's, so, it's so very unfortunate that guys feel like they are left behind. That we're not trying to leave you behind. Just that women have been oppressed for a long time and we are still trying to fight those oppressions, right? So please enjoy this video. And I just want each and every one of you, though, to urge, I want to urge every one of you, sorry, to ask themselves, what are they doing as individuals, not everybody's business now? What am I doing as GBV is my business? What am I doing to, to reclaim a safer UFH? The action that I can do as an individual, not with my friends, not with my colleagues, not as a unit, what am I doing as an individual? When you're watching this video, I just want you to reflect on that and think a bit. Thank you so much. My name is Nontlantla Sibanda Moyo, Director of the Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit at the University of Fort Hill. The university exists within a broader society that is largely affected by gender-based violence. And as a university, we have established the gender-based violence prevention unit so it can respond to issues of gender-based violence that we face within our campus environment. By having this unit, by having this office, we are also saying zero tolerance to gender-based violence. That office as it stands, it is a symbol of our zero tolerance kind of approach to gender-based violence. A lot has happened since um, the new director came. We have worked on ways to work together to better enforce the rules while remaining sensitive um, to the nature of the misconduct. With a safer environment, you will be able to have free movement of students at any time when they are studying and also when they are participating in their extracurricular programs. Uh, all of our officers, um, uh, we have been 320 for this campus and outside campus. 
They have been trained with how to deal with the gender-based violence issues. We further engaging with the external stakeholders as ASAPS in terms of assisting when it comes to our gender-based violence issues. This is very much important for our fellow brothers to, to be educated because some of the things they don't understand as uh, brothers, UFH tenders, so we have taken a stand also to fight and also to be part of a gender-based violence prevention unit. Our students that are living with disabilities cannot fight themselves, but they make sure that there is the unit that is there so that they can go and report. It's a great deal for them. We will also include the issue of a gender-based violence in our policies. Gender-based violence prevention is our business at properties and services. As the department, we are responsible for creating a safe campus environment that does not enable any type of uh, gender-based violence. From a human resources perspective, it is obviously our responsibility to ensure that all employees know what constitutes GBV. This is great for us as the queer community because now we, we, we have a voice. Now we have someone that is going to stand up for us because in the past we didn't have stuff like that. As SRC, we are working collaboratively with the GBV unit to reclaim a safer campus. We should all stand up and we should all be counted we should all make sure that as members of the Fort Hare community, we are very vocal about having zero tolerance for gender-based violence in any of our spaces. A safe university campus is critical because in university, it is a learning environment and not just for academics but also for personal development. So it is very important that SAFE University is a starting point for us as adults because in university we are learning to be adults, we are learning to be um, independent, we are learning the, the, the societal norms and what is acceptable in the society. So if the university is safe then we can come out of the university also and, and create a safe society for everyone else outside of the university. In reclaiming a safer UFH, MEC GPV prevention, your business. Thank you so much for that. Um, before I give over to U Apelele, Dizakala U. Prof Azosu Gracer with his presence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> VC Prof Mulungu. Can you clap hands for him, please? Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, that's better. Thanks very much. I've been told that I can speak for as long as I want. <laughs> because, because it says here on the program, keynote. It says keynote. You, you don't give a keynote in two minutes. All right, thanks very much, uh, program director, and thanks everyone. I actually, if, if I was told not to speak, I would, I would have been very pleased because I've been sitting back and listening to the discuss, discussions and dialogues uh, during this, uh, this meeting. But first of all, to greet everyone, uh, to greet, um, I, I don't have the time now, I'm told, members of the MEC are here. I see there are at least four deans of faculty here. I see there are professors, there are lecturers, but, and there are members of the support services and admin staff. Um, I also see there are stakeholders here. And thanks very much for making it. Councillor uh, Ngal, welcome. We should have started this uh, in your time, during your time as SRC president, but uh, we're making up for it now. So thanks very, uh, very much, everyone, for, for coming. And, but most importantly for me, the students. Now, we are, and I think we dare not forget this, as we discuss these very important matters, as we discuss issues of GBV, we might think there's something unique about it. 
there's nothing that's unique. We've been at it for 108 years. Z.K. Matthews, the first graduate, was here long before we came. Gertrude Nzabati was here long before we came. We don't hear about GBV in their time. We don't have GBV in their time. So there's something, there's something that we need to talk about. The second thing I want to say is I've been listening to the debate and I've, we, need to, we need to balance this. The causes of GBV are not at Fort Hare. People bring mindsets to Fort Hare. I also want to dispel this thing. I mean, I'm not sympathetic to that business around, around the corner in town. But let's, let's get this straight. Alcohol does not cause GBV. It, and I, want to, I want to make this very clear. It's a person who causes GBV, and they use alcohol as a pretext. That's the point. And it, it's very, very, very clear. There are many, if I take the current students, don't ask me where I know this from. There are many of our students who, who drink, and drink a lot, but they don't cause GBV. They don't cause GBV. The cause of GBV is that mindset that the person brings to the university. The other, the other driver of GBV is inequality between the genders. That's what we bring, all of us. Before we go to high school, before we go to, to, to university, that notion that men are more equal than women, men should deserve better than women, that's a driver of GBV. That person who does GBV is not doing it because, you know, it's because they believe that I'm entitled to the other person. I'm entitled because I'm, I'm a man, I'm supposed to be powerful. And that's, that's the key thing that we don't we dare not uh, forget when we talk about this. GBV is essentially about power over another person. It's about power. You, ex, ex, uh, you, you, you exercise power of another human being. And a human being that you believe has less power, has less resources, has less uh, leverage. Like that man who laughed. That one who laughed and in the case disappeared. Because they basically said, I'm in power, I'm going to quash this one. I'm going to quash this one. Because that person who, who think about it, you analyze it, that person who does GBV believes that they have power. Also, they connect to other circuits of power. They connect to circuits of power. I want to address um, our law enforcement, enforcement agencies. Gentlemen, it's not to, to you, but I'm glad, I'm really glad that we are in this dialogue together. But I'm, I get troubled a lot of the time. We report cases there. It's a mountain, it's an uphill to open a case against GBV. Here, Alice, it is. It is an uphill. It's a problem. Every time you have to open a case, it becomes a problem. And I hope that from today it's going to end. I hope from today. I'm sorry to talk like this, but I understand. That police station there is not for you, gentlemen or for the other police officers. It's for us. It's for these young people here. It's for these young people here. And so if, if Ms. Moyo or any of the staff or the security take as a person there to report a case, open the case. It's not your business to ask questions. That's none of your business. Open the case. Open the case. And, and, and so what, we, what happens, therefore, when we talk about GBV, we always believe that the real obstacles are the perpetrators. We always believe that the obstacle to GBV are the perpetrators only. No. Some of the problems are us. 
we cover up for GBV perpetrators. We cover up. In my seven and a half years here, I've seen women, adults, who have their own children, I've seen them cover up for young men who have committed GBV. I've seen them covering up. I've seen parents covering up. For rape. Took transport and brought the uncle along and brought the perpetrator and brought a, a, a sibling. They came to my office. I had these people. What sort of apology? What, what apology do you give for GBP? So I set the mother down. I told the young man to step out. I said, Kaupume, I want to talk to your mother. Mother says, please, this is the only one, first graduate, first university attendee in the family. I said, mom, listen, put yourself in the shoes of the mother, the other mother. The other mother. Were you going to ask me this? No, no, no. I said, so why are you asking me to do something that you yourself would not do? The long, the long and short of it is that transport that was the end of the story. And that will be the end of the story for anyone here who is a perpetrator. Same. That's, a, that's the same. So, Director Moyer, and especially the staff in the GBV Prevention Unit, but also to all of us, fighting GBV is transformation itself. We always think transformation is to bring more women, bring more black people, and so on and so forth. No, this is also a very difficult, a very important form of transformation, because you're changing mindsets. You're dealing with people who are damaged, people whose minds are damaged, people who have very strange beliefs. That's, that's what we're talking about here. Get this straight. Get this straight. If you're going to grandstand about GBV, you're going to end up nowhere. The decision and the assembly that we set here was not because of a march. It was because of a collective realization that something needed to be done. We had set, we had debates, we agreed on the policy, and in the policy we wrote in that there shall be a GBV prevention unit. That's us. Not because of some march. Please, you can march for money, you can march for this and march for that. You don't march for setting up a GBV unit. We set it up. We put money behind it. We employed people to do it. That's what we did. And so I don't want this thing, oh, it's us. Oh, it's, it's, nobody is going to take credit. On this one, nobody takes credit. It's all of us. It's either we fight together or we sink together. That's what GBV is about. Because once a person is, is affected by GBV, you've ruined their life. You kill them alive. I just want to go back in time, but also now, and thank all the people who have been involved in this work since five years ago. There was a task team, which was chaired by Dr. Uh, Ellen Rungani, who's here. Um, Professor Olufsen was part of it, and several others were part of that. They did the groundwork, they did the think work, they advised, they advise, they help review uh, issues. And then of course, then Dr. Professor Olofsson then was the acting director. She paved the way, she blazed the trail to set this unit up. And then of course, last year, we employed uh, Ms. Vanda Moyo to be the substantive director. And she has proceeded then to appoint staff in that office. We've put money there. We took this to the council of the university and we said, this shall be the dedicated unit. I need to make something very important. I listened to the discussion here. 
lest someone walks away here thinking that GBV is or young people. GBV student to student. There's GBV staff to student. There's GBV staff to staff. When we set up this unit, it's not just to deal with the young ones only. As a matter of fact, it might be a blind spot that we're not looking hard enough at the staff to student one. I'm talking about here. Grown up men who chase after 19 year olds, 18 year olds. That's what we should deal with. Probably in his 50s. And he had someone to pimp young girls for him, living here on campus. Ply them with alcohol and then rape. Of course, that person is history now, is not here. What I'm saying, uh, 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 Director Moy, is that look deep. What I'm saying to everyone, look deep. I was very interested in the, in the drama uh, uh, that was done earlier. Mr. Lowe, la la lecturer, Mr. Love. But means go Mr. Love, up at campus in. Let's deal with them. Let's deal with our Mr. Love. I'm, I'm absolutely serious. If Mr. Love wants to have a girlfriend or someone, let them go to their age mates. Let them go to their age mates. Let them not destroy the lives of young, vulnerable people. And let them not use money to lure people into these very dangerous activities. I also want to think things are kind of together, coming together now. I think over the last while we've learned a lot. We've learned that to deal with GBV, you don't just use the stick alone. You also have to sit down and invest time in changing consciousness. Change the way think, think, people think about gender equality. Change it. As long as Usa believe, as long as you still believe that women are more inf uh, inferior to men, we risk, you are a risk to yourself. You are a risk to yourself. That's the consciousness we've got to change. Because I don't know where this comes from. Because the reality, the reality in the world, in the country, in the university, is that women are just as capable. In fact, the best performers in terms of the student body, academically, are women. And yazige lubangugu funyanga dimbete. Na le yokshalsa na erez biktetwa ngayo ap. Yeah. And people now, you know, people. No, 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 no. This is where it starts because then the person cooks for you. As they said. They clean for you, they clean your clothes, and the next thing, they believe that to all intents and purposes, you are the wife. And then they can do anything they, they like. So the thing about changing consciousness is therefore going to be very important. And I'm glad that there's a convergence of practices, of developments at this point. For the last two years, we've had these endeavors for men organized under the auspices of student affairs. Highly successful. 2022, 2023. And I believe this time, there's going to be joint kind of organization between student affairs and the GBV prevention unit. That's exactly how it should be. But I don't want to forget staff, next staff, man. Next be the staff. Yes, be the staff in that. Yeah, we need to call it your staff. Because these things, these things, these things, of, it, it, it bothers, it bothers. The appeal, therefore, 
to those in positions of power. And I started with the law enforcement agencies, especially the South African police services. I want to appeal. We need you this side, not the other side. We need this side of the fight, gentlemen. Fortunately, we've worked well with the station commander, Kenel Kabaka, and the new station commander, so we talk. We also talk with the police station commander in East London. So yes, I can say these things. But not only that, but these things have got to be said. They've got to be said. We have 10,000 young people on this campus. If you're going to get to the police station, go to Aizindabaza, say Fort, go, go sort it out at Fort Hare. What is that? Councillor Ngala, I want to throw a challenge at you. For those who don't know, Councillor Ngala is the ward councillor of Ward 11, which is Fort Hare, Fort Hare only. Mosi, Kona Lamali, a ward, a pepper, Dalai, who serves our server, a ward, a service delivery ward. Because we know that you do get an allocation for servicing the world. Channel some of that money towards fighting gender-based gender, uh, uh, violence. Kau bridging for starters. I hope it's not an ambush, but I, I think it's, it's a reality. Because you don't have constituency where people have to grade uh, gravel roads and so on. Your gravel road is here. It's potholes on campus and GBV. That's your, that's your mandate. We give it to you now. But talking about other people on, on, uh, who are in position of power, uh, Mamandi Vile from the rapid response kind of uh, unit structure, Again, we want to see you. I know there's this thing. This is what's happening. No, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. In the same way that you're not going to build Alice alone, we are not going to build this university alone. We're not going to do that. So it's, it's very, very important. There are many others people in positions of authority, once again, I want to appeal to them. Society expect a lot from you. That's what it is. Then to us, an appeal to us, I think the very nice slogan there, it says, gender prevention, gender-based violence prevention is your business. It is our business. It is our business. If somebody, somebody, oh, what the, but back Betty, the man, in some gonna get department, yeah, got a back Betty. It is our business. Man, in gain again, go back and come be. Last year, something terrible happened. Something really, really terrible, shocking, and shameful. A young woman came from town late by themselves, the different versions to this, by themselves, and walk through the gate. The version from the officers at the gate, they said she was drunk. Now, these are officers, they can see in their judgment that this person has had one too many. Instead of them, they have a car. Instead of saying, wait, we'll give you an escort, get in the car, we'll take you to a race. No. They let her walk all the way. And then halfway th through, before she got to a race, someone popped out of the bush and raped her. The, the, the poli the, the, his men, his men were sitting there. I, I want an answer. I said those men should be dismissed immediately. I have not received a report, Mr. Nyan. I have not received a report. Because that is an absolute and an ultimate 
kind of dereliction of duty by people that we pay. The one who saw her afterwards said, when I lifted her, this is now after the, 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 the deed, when I lifted her, I could smell alcohol. That's the only thing the person could think of. When I lifted her up, I could smell alcohol. A security officer zala pages. Fne kani bi zeman a security ni faga pa ni ni kazi GBV training yodo me mismoy. I I think it's very very important. You may take it as a joke. It is very serious to have protectors who are clueless about men, matters of gender equality and gender-based violence prevention. I, I think we're doing these students, especially, we're doing them a disservice. Nima bi zegen zai funu i bona lo 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 dialogue. Yam 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 apoi sanjelo la pe campus in order. We've said that there's zero tolerance, but it's zero, it's zero tolerance is also to those who aid and abet, who enable GBV, like those 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 ones. Ne supervisor zab, ne supervisor zab. Zero tolerance to them too. But also we're talking about zero tolerance of student to student, staff to, stu st staff to student, and staff to staff, GBV. Another thing, last year again, maybe 2022, there was a gender-based violence case here. A person um, assaulted their girlfriend. And then the girlfriend ran into some room here at Res, and a person followed and kicked the door down and continued beating her up while she was on the ground. Then the case was taken to ER. HR up con must be there. I figure why HR, the case was no longer gender based. These were persons, these were partners, intimate partners. But the case was physical abuse. That's what it was, physical abuse. That's all. The gender-based violence, the fact that this person was beating this other one because he was entitled, because they are a girlfriend and they fought about things domestic, was lost in the case completely. I, I've said again, the people who cover up are not strangers from another planet, it's, they're among us. They're among us. And such was the case in this, in this one. So, we are now today officially claiming, or, or rather launching, they're reclaiming a safer UFH campaign. It starts today. We're launching that one, and um, we're also going to open the, the office, uh, uh, the refurbished office of the gender-based violence unit, a gender-based prevention uh, unit office here in Alice. But very importantly also, and this will take stages in, in the way in, in which it's implemented and rolled out. But we're also here to honor two students who were unfortunate to die at the hands of perpetrators. The one is Nostel Omtebeni. That story was told earlier. I think uh, Cheryl mentioned that story and somebody else. That was August 2020. I'm testing you. 2020? August 2021. 17th of August 2021. We're here to honor them, to honor their memory, but also to say that we'll continue the fight in her name. We're also honoring Usipose Tumkomboti. Usipose Tumkomboti was also killed here at the Kume Bridge. Human River Bridge. Mdana bantu wabula wa wafa nya. Nya. Dikabuza nguku. I can ask now. Where is the case? Ngabuza ma polisa nguku. Where is the case? Where is the case now? And, and this is, this, there lies the problem. There lies the problem. A person gets assaulted. A person gets raped. A person gets killed. And then the case goes cold, and the case disappears. The funu thrower, I want to throw a challenge, therefore, at the police, of, uh, police station, police officers. 
to dust up the docket of that case and talk to us, gentlemen. Talk to us. What has become of that case? It's not a dog that died there. It's a human being. Somebody's child. Like my child, like your child. It's not sufficient that we go to the bridge, we put a, 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 a something. Memorializing, you know, her. We also need to say, where is the case? I don't, I don't want to believe that Zia Peli case is the case in Glapoli Station. But it makes it, it leaves me tempted to say that. It leaves me tempted to say Zia Afi case. Please say it more. Say it as it is. As it is. Zia Peli cases, Zia Choni cases, and nothing happens. And nothing happens. And I think it's appropriate that we say this when we honor the memories of Nostrello and the memory Gaspo said to Mkombot. It's very, very important. And of course, finally, as I said, we are here to open the offices in, in Alice. I know we're tired now, not all of you, it's very fast. So I would discourage you if, you, if you're hungry and tired, you don't have to go, a few people will go. But on the march, I think that one, I will invite people to, to come along. Just one small announcement. Now, now before, before the um, uh, uh, announcement, the reporting of cases. Something has changed with this unit. I need to underline this. Before, cases used to be reported to a man to a man, Jenga la KC. I did you want to tell them to report a good? Why Shoban is a case? Why Faget does be need? The needs they get, they used to Shobanisa. They used to Shobanisa the cases and throw them in the bin. The format that we have now under Director Moyo, you've seen them. We have a solid women led team. We have a solid, professionally trained, competent women-led team. Also, figure pango your reporter come your data. Call him your data, but be reporter go your answer. Mkaza. Mkaza. This time you can be confident you're going to be received by professionals. The reporting officer, the investigation officer, investigating officer, the social worker, you saw them here. That's what it is. The game has changed. The game has changed. If I'm not, I don't forget, my memory is still long. I will not let cases disappear. We shall not let cases be shwabanisad. We shall not let cases be thrown and quashed. No, we're not going to do that. And in the same way that Lama Polsa Akolawa and the supervisor are gone, we're not going to let them come back here. No, we're not going to let them. We're not going to let them. You know, Kona Lando Bat City Sirani University, we are running at we are running. No, we we're not going to do that. As I conclude, therefore, I wish to once again thank everyone and thank you for your patience. Patients, one last annou announcement is that the unit, the GBV prevention unit, will start a, a GBV podcast, which is called GBV Bonfire Series, which will be dialogues, smaller groups, but inspired discussions, inspired dialogues, educational dialogues, mind changing, consciousness changing dialogues. Okay, it will drive these anti-GBV conversations, develop scholarship around these areas, develop thought leadership and initiatives that will lead to solutions to address GBV. And that, if you need for further information, I'm sure further information will come about this, this, this series. But, and again, 
when I get time, I hope to attend some of those and just, and just listen like I did today. Once again, thanks very much for coming to this event and thanks very much to our stakeholder. Forget what I said, for, the, for a moment at least, forget what I said. We really, really appreciate your time. And uh, like it or not, we're going to change this university. We're going to make it a safe space for women and for men and for all of us. Thank you very much. Partners, it's been a long day, and I know that we are hungry, <laughs> and we need to eat, and we are way behind time, but what we've had today are very, very important conversations, very, very important discussions. And what we, are get, what we are getting and what we are learning as a unit is the need for more of these discussions, is the need for us to create more platforms where we can have these discussions freely and have more time to converse and to hold each other accountable. So, according to our program, and I'll call upon my colleague, Apelele to please come and lead us on. I am aware that we are behind time and totally do understand for those that may not be able to make it, but a few of us, a few of us with the Vice Chancellor and hopefully with members of the MSC are going to go to the bridge. We're going to take a short walk and just get there for a brief moment, a very brief moment. I'm also going to invite all our panel members to please join us as we go there for a brief moment and a, a couple of students are also going to join us. We're going to march, so marching means we're going to move faster, quicker, so that we try and catch up on time. And then from there, we go and officially open our offices. And that's also going to be a very brief and short program, but you don't want to miss it. Apelele, if you could come and lead us out of the room. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Ms. Moyo. Mine is very short. I'll just do announcement, then I will head out with the MEC, EMT members, our panel members, and other staff members to go uh, to the bridge, and, and, and our external stakeholders. Sorry very much for almost omitting you guys. So we will be still live, so we will see the second phase of the program. So don't worry, but for us students that will be staying behind here, we do have something that will facilitate, as you saw on our program for, for this launch of today. We had written there that we have 100 gifts for the first RSVPs. So that, also, that will also be initiated during the, the match that will be doing with the, with the members that are delegated to do that. And also we will challenge the status quo. You know what I'm talking about. I won't expand on, on that one. So we won't waste time out like for the people that have been delegated to live with to, to head out right now so that we can do it much faster. So we are doing the bridge in honor of the lives that we have lost 
here in our community as the University of Forte. And we also have channeled the mayor of Raymond Mslaba as we are saying that we are declaring the bridge a safe zone. What are the measures that have been taken into place so that we do not experience what we have experienced before? And then we we'll head straight to our offices where, whereby we'll be launching and officially opening them. Thank you very much. Hello guys, can I please request the following students to follow after after Sele Kuponyi by the MEC and the facilitator. Can all students remain behind? All the students, we have refreshments for you guys. The SRC members are also following. As I mean, you know my request. We are heading this way. Can everybody move? But we are going to add that there. You are going to the office. When we are in the bridge, we are Yeah. Yeah. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hmm? I'll show you, uh, please. Yes, yes, yes. Like the stress now. <laughs> yes, yeah. ultimately. So now we are walking yes. towards yes. Uh, the bridge yes. where we are going to be honoring yes. the students, students from the University of Ford yes. here, yeah. who have, um, whom we've lost to gender-based violence. So join us as we go along. Yes. So this is the delegation that will be going 
to the bridge, to one of the GBV hotspots, that where we've lost one of our students, Sipo said to Ngombo. I so kuluma so kuluma no no mustache. No, I'm sure they understand. Where is Azami? Yes, we are taking good care of you. We are taking good care of you. <laughs> Yo, uh, uh, the VC insisted it was important we do it and yeah. finish everything. But I'm, I'm glad that you're here. No, I'm glad I to really be here. Am. It's so, this work is so important. It is, yeah. it is. So I'm, I, I am here with the GVC, yes. teaching and learning. We are walking towards the bridge, one of the GPB hotspots, where we've lost a number of our students to gender-based violence. So join us as we go along. DVC, you want to say something? I'm, I'm yeah. really very happy to be here. And I just think that uh, this is a very important achievement for us as a university. And uh, yeah, this work is really important uh, because it makes a big difference in the life of both staff and students for us in the university. Absolutely, absolutely. And we are looking forward uh, to launching our East London offices. The University of Fort Hare has three campuses, East London, Bisho and Alice. So before the end of this year, we are looking forward to, to launching the East London office. That's going to be wonderful. Uh, and I just think that this is a very critically important uh, development for us as a university. Absolutely, absolutely. And currently, how, how is the, the university, in, and I'm, I'm going to just be asking, I'm going to ask this question, do you see? Uh, how is the university integrating GBV into our curriculum, our teaching curriculum? So I think uh, at the moment, the, in, the issue of inclusivity, the issue of diversity, the issue of um, violence, um, many of our programs have a focus on that. Mm -hmm. Like in education, uh, there's research being done on violence in schools. That's great. So, so we have violence in schools in our curriculum. It's so, so there is research and various work that is happening. So I think um, we are seeing more and more that the issues that affect uh, different professionals mm -hmm. and so in their training we have to also ensure we prepare them for that so i think That's... it is beginning to feature more and more absolutely and as the gender-based violence prevention units we are here when you need us to come in and do lectures and mm -hmm. do gpv lectures we are here we are available lectures on gender equality gender sensitivity and inclusivity we are happy to do that that's wonderful, and I think it will be very important as part of your campaign that the GBV Prevention Unit also then maybe goes and meet uh, with the faculty boards mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's a very captive audience, I think, where you can uh, discuss different issues, mm -hmm. the work you're doing, but also possible curriculum interventions mm -hmm. and also doing institutional research. So mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we, Absolutely, you yes. know, we become aware of the extent of the uh, uh, GBV uh, because not all of it is reported. Absolutely. So I Absolutely. think we need to do that kind of institutional research. Captain. Captain. Yes, we need to work together. So the members of the police, Alice Police Station, are here with us in the march. I'm live. And we are marching towards the bridge. And we are reclaiming a safer UFH and a safer Alice together. And you must also think about it. 
risk that those ties try to fight uh, GPG prevention, spiritual crime prevention, mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. CPA. Spiritual crime, in, spiritual crime prevention, that's yes. very interesting. That's very interesting. Captain, so what, what is that about? Try now to organize you as well. Mm -hmm. Come with your own issues so that we know. Because they support us well to everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where is Azami? Where is that? Where's the music? There's so many. No, but start here. Start here. Start here. Start. I want to interview another person. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. May I have the mic, please? Oh, okay. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Ah, good. Pura! Pura! Oh yes, uh, now we are we are taking the walk to to see the the hot spot of the GBV. We are going to the Kume River now. Yeah, to 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 just uh, see. That's a hot spot because our, I, the most of the gender-based violence cases happen there in that bridge. So we are going there to that bridge. We will also a uh, memo. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, Memorage the students that have passed away in that bridge. So we are going there. Thank you. I <laughs> Is my
live on Facebook. Okay, so we're going to. Don't you want to? Because I think it's better if she does it. Oh, okay. So we're going to the Chumi Bridge. We're going to the Chumi Bridge. We're all walking together from the sports complex. Um, that was a site of a murder of one of our students early last year. So we are going to um, go and stand and have a moment of silence. And we will hear from the mayor um, of Dikeni what it is that the municipality is doing in order to make the Chumi Bridge specifically safer. Because um, all students have to pass that bridge in order to get into town to do their groceries or to do anything. Oh. Who? Nebs. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Hey, thanks very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Apelele Martinez, the SRC president of the Forty. Now we are going to one of the gender based violence for sports in Alice Campus, which is the Kume River, uh, where we are going to go there and consolidate the uh, initiative of uh, coming up with GPV uh, initiatives. So we are going with uh, external stakeholders, which includes the SAPS, the MEC, the SRC, and the students, including the GPV uh, unit program. So we're going there to remember all the students who were once victims in that bridge. And we want to make sure that that bridge, uh, all the students who are affected in that bridge, they get remembered. Thanks very much. We're back. The walk, the march we are doing now is significant as us remembering and honoring the lives of those that, of the students that we have lost to gender based violence. And the placard I'm holding here has the name of one of the victims that we have lost and we call to gender-based violence and we remember the city of Fort Hay. And right, Prof, what does this mean to you? What we are doing right now? This is an incredible moment in terms of um, the fact that we're going to have a mayor here um, because we need to work together with the town of absolutely Spain in order to make this a safer space for everyone but especially for us absolutely so gpv is not just the business of us within the university but it is the business it also involves us working together and collaborating with external stakeholders absolutely absolutely so we are about to get to the bridge, which is the hot spot. Can I please get to I'm trying. So we are walking towards Altero did a walkabout with and us walking to the space as go students we refuse for the bridge to remain an, an unsafe zone for staff members as a safer zone and we cannot do this on our own we need all hands on deck we need the municipality to play their part 
We need members of the South African Police Services to play their part. We need you. We need students. We need community members. We need civil society organizations to play their part. So what we are seeing here is the bridge. What we are seeing here is the bridge. For the tavern, imagine here. Uh, that clock. Yeah, no, it failed. It failed out of uh, what defense. Remember when we went to the mayor? Yeah. And we said, the the must be must be be. Yeah. Yo. I think we'll just end up putting our own, the solar ones here. Yeah. Yeah. Facing this direction. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Just yeah, like at the start village. You see what will happen if you put the, the ones here. Okay, they need to be this. Thank you so much. You can tell that Apelele is an activist, and for that she was a member of SRC. Uh, thank you so much. I think firstly let me thank you for being able to make your way here. It has been quite a busy day with a lot of critical information being shared. But I think for you to be still with us at this time of the day, it shows how important and how committed all of us are into this fight against gender-based violence. Let me acknowledge the presence of the, uh, the presence of the Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Butungu, members of MEC who are here, extended management team of the university, um, a representation from the Raymond Municipality, um, all our invited guests, all stakeholders that are partnering with us in this journey, uh, students that have made us also uh, to gather here. Indeed, we agree, Apelele, uh, that uh, the fight against GBV is for all of us. It is our business. There is no one who owns it. It's all of us. Um, if all these units unite, we should be able to defeat this uh, demon. We are also here, also in honor um, of the memory of the students that have passed on as a result of this uh, demon of gender-based violence. And here we speak of our two students, Uno Skel and Devin, and Umis Mkombot, who also recently uh, passed on not so long. Uh, so we are saying preventing gender-based violence is a top priority for our university. We believe that a supportive and learning environment is essential for all students. When all of you came here, you came for the purpose of getting a qualification. This is what we stand for as the university. So anything that seems to divert your attention from that, we shall fight it at all costs within our united uh, efforts. GBV does not only affect students, but the university community as a whole. I think that's why you are seeing all the stakeholders who are here, uh, even from outside the university, because it does affect us all. Uh, as the dean within the Student Affairs Division, we are fully committed with our resources to support the office or to work with the office of the GBV in fighting this pandemic. Once again, I'm calling upon all our efforts. Uh, all the important information has been shared, but there is just this critical one I want to say, that if all of us can stop to normalize the abnormal situation in the community, we should be able to win this fight. So if I am to know that something wrong is happening, I sh it should be upon my, uh, myself that I report to the relevant offices. In this case, there is GBV office, which we are going to go and see now, but there is also campus protection services. But all of us in the university as staff, we've got the responsibility to take care of you. 
with those few words, I want to thank you, Director GBV, uh, Ms. Moyo, for this great initiative. Uh, we are launching this campaign, Reclaiming the Safer UFH. We will work on this mission, and GBV has to be something of the past. Thank you so much. I need to buy ensuring us because we want to be safe as we are saying we are claiming a safe by USA. Amanda! Amanda! I'm sorry, on our side we're supposed to uh, follow the protocol. Uh, I'm not a spokesperson of the police. Uh, there's only one thing I can say is you are going to patrol the bridge as usual. Uh, you know most of the bridge is under municipality. Uh, otherwise, in our side, we are going to patrol the bridge as usual. Thank you.
and as we lay and leave these flowers here today, it is a significant demonstration of the owner, of how we are honoring the memory of Isikoseki Mugombot, whose life we lost in, 10, in February 2023, right by this bridge. We remember her and we say, may her memory live on, may her legacy live on, and may that which happened to her never ever happen to any other student or staff member of the University of Fort Hare. May this bridge, we declare this bridge as a safer zone. We, declare, we reclaim this bridge as a safe zone. If anything, that is what we can do to honor and remember. We'll be making our way to the office whereby we'll be reviewing and launching the Gender Based Violence Prevention Unit Office of Adit Campus. Uh, this is one of the initiatives that say that as we are embarking on this journey, we say there are offices that are your safe space. We say that these things are no longer going to happen at, at this university or, or perhaps this community of ours. So I would like us to, to, to head to our offices whereby we will be officially launching.
parties and um, a safety place. Um, it's, it's, it's a good moment for the university. I think this will take our fight uh, to another level. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and Dean, we, we, we owe the community a GBV in Dava before the end of this year. Yes, uh, indeed. I think it was quite clear in today or this morning session uh, that there is a lot of appetite for our students and staff to engage on matters of GBV. It was quite clear that if they are given space and opportunity, they will be able to add value and, and then we can take uh, this fight together. So I am with you. I think uh, I will speak to the team. Plans should be underway that before the end of the year indeed, we've got this in our annual calendar of the university where students sit themselves and talk about this issue of GBV from their perspective. They come from different uh, communities. They've got different of, uh, understanding in terms of GBV. So I think that will come very handy uh, for us as the university. Thank you, Dean. The Dean has spoken. The Dean has committed GBV in Daba before the end of this year. Yes, we commit. Thank you. or a story to tell. I think that's the overview Dr. Rungani will give us in terms of we have had a long way and we, have, we still have a long way to go. So let us take this chance and bring it in so that we see how long or how far we have come and where exactly we are going as it is a long way. Over to you, Dr. Uh, good afternoon. I'm going to be very brief because I think most of the things have been said. Which mic am I using? All of them. Okay. So the the development of part of the policy recommendations. So after the 2019 uh, GBV policy, the I must say it was a collective. Um, uh, effort because during that journey we're starting from nowhere we you know in South Africa and long GBV prevention units so we had to benchmark most 
in the Office of Student Affairs, and some were uh, the task team and the MEC. Uh, I must say the MEC had to push because we had to present this to different committees and to council. It has taken a bit long, but I must say um, we are very happy to be here today. The university is to provide a safe environment to our staff and students. We are doing that with various stakeholders internally and externally as you can see. We have seen it since morning. We have worked closely with the SCU where we do many activities before the unit was, uh, was there uh, through uh, Dr. Prof. Olison. We've worked with the, uh, the Office of the Dean of Students to bring awareness. So we were developing a unit and also bringing awareness uh, into the university space. And I must say now we can all agree that the awareness is now here, but now we need to continue now conscientizing uh, staff and students about the importance of GBV. You can see even the attendance. Um, it should be a business. We cannot have another university meeting on a day like this. So it means that we still have a long way to prioritize this. When we started, GBV was, oh, what is that thing that you are doing? Oh, you are in that thing. But I'm happy that we have formalized it. Uh, the team, as I was saying to Miss Moyo, when we look back, it's like you are a mother grandkids playing in the park to say yes we have arrived with the team and uh, as the task team on behalf of the task team we want to say we are very much talk without action but this is a testament that you know together in excellence we can go far so uh, congratulations uh, to everyone uh, because today is because of all our hard work. The volunteers, you know, our internal and stake, uh, external stakeholders look at your doors, you know, to say we want a special meeting, you'll be like, no, we don't need special meetings, but you pushed, you pushed until it was approved. And also to the council, we want to thank them also to for believing in the mandate, because when we went to present there, our budget was approved without any changes, which shows that they believed in our mandate. So, Ms. Moyo, we are passing the button to you, and we know that the unit is in capable hands. Thank you very much. Don't piss out when you hit it. 
Reveal. The reveal. One of our reveals that we are revealing today. So, if you look, I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> so, Miss Moyo, who revealed this bench and tell us about the bench of. Why is it here? And why does it have this? Over to you, Ms. Moy. Thank you, Program Director. So this, what we are about to review. Very, very proud. Um, it's, it's part of our pride as a unit. It represents what we really, and we also recognize that our students and staff are diverse. Uh, reveal. This is a bench where many of you students, staff, you can come and relax. And we are calling this the rainbow bench. So if you feel like we're calling it the rainbow bench, if you feel like you need a moment, you just want to be, come and sit and be by yourself. I, but I want um, my colleague to please uh, read it out. It is special. It is a surprise for someone who is not aware, but somebody that we value, that we are grateful for, somebody who laid a foundation, a firm foundation in the establishment of this office, somebody who paved the way, an ally and a supporter of the unit. Mm. Drum roll, please. And if you can just reveal it, colleague. Please. It reads dedicated to Prof. Mariana Olufsen, our interim director, convention unit from the 1st of 2022. Please come, please, please, please come. Please, please, please come. might or may not know Uprof is always talent. Okay, hey. <laughs> always colorful though, so this represents her so much as much as it, 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 it represents inclusivity in our university. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I was not <laughs> expecting this. <laughs> that we all as Fortney, he put a lot of work into doing this. We have passed, I have passed the baton of directorship on an amazing person who I know 
is going to just take off and fly. So thank you, Ms. Moyo. Thank you thank for you. this honor. I am speechless and crying. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
You have brought talent in this university. We are showcasing it to you. Talent. <laughs> no problem. So I would like the principal of the university, together with our director, to reveal. That is behind the There's no music. Okay, let's hold for the picture okay. this week. Okay, we need to hold for the picture, right? You're right, you're telling me. I'm closer to it. Yeah. Did we we are about to reveal five, four, three, three and and it's a gender. It's a gender. Okay. 
Members of the you come here, you chill. Any of our students and staff members, this is our waiting area, but we can use it as just a space. We are it's 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 our soft landing space. So you come here, you will wait, you can sit if you this work has been done by our fine arts students. Okay. This is where the magic happens. Okay. This is where the magic happens. This is our boardroom and our smart boards. When you come here, we're gonna, our, our tables are foldable. So some nights we're going to fold them and have movie nights and discussions. It's a very relaxing and friendly nice. space. Very nice. And then the, the, I see you've got the paintings. And We're going to move to our... We're going to move to, this is this is the director's office. This is the space still with some of our art from the art students. This is the office. This is the office. And over there, DVC is, this is our in our admin office this is the admin office this is where our, our administrator will sit and receive most of our clients the clients that come in admin yes okay so then a person will wait there and yes. come here we are going to we're going to put a sliding glass yeah. over okay. there so that to the person, but the person can be chilling by our waiting area. So maintenance has done it. That's the ones we did. And then before we move to, let me just, no, let me, we need to go this way. This is our consultation room. This is where our social worker will do consultation. <laughs> this is our consultation room. Okay, so this is the consultation room. Yes, yes, private. yes. It's private. We're going to make it sound okay. so that people who are outside will not be able okay. to hear what's right. happening. This, this is the counseling room. Counseling room, Dean. Okay. This one. Then we move. Uh, well, this is the toilet, this is the bathroom, this is the bathroom, you understand shortly, yeah, yeah, sure. yes, and then uh, this is uh, our office for the investment. Uh, and uh, other stuff. This is an office for this is an office for our staff members. Okay. Yes. Then our interns will use the the boardroom. I see. So the idea is to have half of our staff 
here in Addis and the other half based in, exactly. uh, in the East London office. Right. Right. These are strong room lockers for the confidential files. You can't break that one easily. Right. Okay. Then we are moving over to this one. This room was still to find an appropriate name for it. But this is our emergency. And we need to bring you to a safe space where you can be either with a social worker and you can't go back to your residence on that same day. A social worker will come and spend a night with you. We are unable to talk at the moment when so something has rest. happened. So they need to rest and maybe after the next day they are able to talk. So before we can move them to the emergency housing, to the safe house, this is where they'll first be in the space. And some of them, all they need is just the one night before they, they, they go home. Some of them just choose to go home. So this is the space. We're going to find an appropriate name okay. for it. Yeah, wow, wow. What is my match? Are they mad for this? This is excellent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are going to move to the we are going to move to the kitchen. So the bathroom is important because if there's someone who slept over there, they need to be able to bath. Yes, they are able to take a shower. That's the toilet. Now we're moving to the kitchen. The kitchen space is also very homely. Well. Yes, the kitchen yeah. is very nice. The kitchen is nice. For food items here, because a lot of times we get students or clients who to purchase a popcorn making machine at least, at the very least, give them something um, to eat. <laughs> then we are going to move to the outside area where we have this is where we see we're going to be having the bone the GPV bonfire series. Okay, outside oh. we are going to put outdoor furniture and with the bonfire in the middle. With the thing, with the fire thing. Yes, with so the we're bonfire. Going the yeah. We're going to do the. I'm we're going to. Be, we are going to do it right yeah. here. So we're getting the outdoor furniture and the bonfire. We'll sit here, have conversations, GPV conversations with MEC members and have them recorded so they can be shared with the world because we believe there's a world of information and resources that resides within the university space. Hmm. This is nice. The, the, the garden, the also it's, it's a mix. It's, it's, it's spacious. It's very yeah, spacious. You see, if we had a gardening thing, I was going to say now they must come and plant and plant. Land, landscape, and landscape and plant. Yeah. Well, we're going to get them. We'll, we'll, we shall, we'll invite you once the outdoor yes. space is done. And that's the space where our caretaker will, will be we'll, we'll, we'll of live, the yeah. unit. Yes. Good. Yeah. Otherwise, this is us. This is our home. Yeah. No, no, I'm glad. I'm glad. When we came here, it was a different house. It was. Yeah. It was. It was, house. It was a house. So security is putting in beams for us. Are oh, they doing beams? Yes, okay. they're doing beams. I'm sure before the end of the week. Okay. That should be done. There's an. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but it's also going to bring life to this side. Yeah, to this side. Right. But it shows how we can transform these houses into units. Yeah. 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 Ye